It's time for Side Scrollers with me, Stuttery Craig. You decide what you lose, not other people. And blast. I like pickles. And co-hosted by our friends from around the internet. You like common sense? Hit that thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rebel.com and Side Scrollers.locals.com. What's going on, everybody? Hey, happy Tuesday to you. I'm Stuttering Craig. Man, do we got to get one today. It is hot out on the internet today. It is spicy. It's crazy. I'll tell you what, it may be more spicy today as I'm joined by not just one lady today. Hello, Blabs. Hello. Lots of estrogen. You're welcome. <laughs> it is truly an episode of Side Scroll Hers today. <laughs> Not just two ladies. Hello, Melanie Mack. Hi, I'm ready for some toxic femininity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the show will be dripping with toxic femininity. That's not, I realized as I was saying that how disgusting that sounded. <laughs> um, not just three ladies. Hello, Desiree. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Man, it is, uh, it's Queens, Queens, what is it? All Queens today on the show. If you had, if you had a uh, <laughs> bunch of cards, which is great. And no, joined by four with the first timer on the show, Savvy. Hello, Savvy. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Oh, couldn't be better. Glad you're here with us. Welcome I'm on happy in. to be here. I'm glad we have blonde representation. Yeah, I was noticing that yesterday when I made the photos. I was like, oh, we have a blonde for once. Yeah. We never have blondes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we breed. Blonde representation is a very important thing. Very important thing. We, we always strive for diversity on the show. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and uh, Sav, I don't know if you realize this. You are the DEI uh, at. So congratulations. So. <laughs> I wear the badge with honor. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Look, we got we had a lot to talk about today. Uh, thank you guys very much for popping in. If it's your first time, do us a favor. Uh, join us over here on YouTube. Uh, we are live over on Rumble as well at rumble.com slash side scrollers. Uh, join the nearly 6,000 followers over there of free speech and common sense in the video game space. Also, we have an X account where you could find out that all these wonderful ladies were on the show today by following us over at x.com slash side scroller pod. Uh, also, we have an Instagram, don't we, Blabs? We do, so follow us for memes and clips and whatnot. Otherwise, not a whole lot, just lots of disappointment. Excellent descriptor <laughs> of the show. Non-stop, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> we also have a Kick account where you can follow us over there uh, at kick.com slash side scrollers. If you want to watch the show, you can, uh, which is great. Also, if you want to listen to the show, you can do that. If you don't want to see our stupid faces, well, in today's, today's situation, you can you do want to see our stupid faces, but not when I'm on the show. Um, but you can listen to us over on Spotify. Find us over there. But if 10 of you today would find sidescrollers.locals.com, I would greatly appreciate that. Labs, why should they go over to sidescrollers.locals.com? Because you guys can find exclusive videos that are not available for viewing on YouTube, like a reaction video that Craig and I did a couple weeks ago. And I won't tell you what the video was about, but it was pretty funny and I learned stuff like ducks. It was all about mallards. That's right. 80s Spoilers. and 90s cartoon <laughs> mallards, which was great. Mm. Uh, and the big thing is that you get notifications whenever we go live, which we know mm -hmm. YouTube is not very good at. Oh, so uh, join us over there. But speaking of YouTube, if you like, join the 72,500 subscribers of Common Sense over here on YouTube as we drive towards, let's say, 100,000. Let's get to that 100K sooner than later over here on YouTube. And uh, it, would, it would give us great pleasure. For YouTube to have to hand us a play button after being such uh, thorns in their side, the first step of <laughs> 2,500 of you who joined. Uh, let's also hit the 600 like goal today and 25 memberships. Let's freaking go. And we're off to a great start as CR Vox came in with 20 gifted memberships right off the bat. It's ridiculous. Savvy, you're a first timer. You get to pick what color goes on the wall today. What color would you like Ooh. to see? We have purple, red, blue, green orange and yellow 
as the DEI representative here today, what color is not on the wall? <laughs> orange is currently not on the wall right now. Neither is. Uh, what do you mean? Orange is right there. It looks yeah. orange on our screen. Is that oh, yellow? That's probably yellow. That's yellow. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference between the two. So, but, but, you know. Yes, there's an important difference. And I find it <laughs> apprehensible that you don't know that. Hey, so so today. <laughs> right in here. I'll Stop you Asian hate. <laughs> Green, or know, or or <laughs> Green or orange? What we like, Steph? Let's go with nice. green then for for my eyes. I'll be a little narcissistic too since I'm DEI today. All yeah, right. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Well, do us a favor, guys. Uh, give it up for CR Vox, who came in with 20 gifted memberships. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Let's get it on the wall over here. That's outstanding. A brand new color strip right there. Mm. That's good. Oh, oh, I can't even see it. Hold on. <laughs> look at that. Look at, that. look at it. That's nice green. Beautiful. Thank you. It is green. Good pick. Thank you so much. CR Vox for the 20 gifted memberships. You guys got a gifted membership. Make sure you say a oh, thank you. Consider paying it forward. We'd greatly appreciate that. Not to be outdone, Grumpy Rat also came in. <laughs> awesome. A brand new membership. Thank you, Grumpy Rat, Love for it. your patronage. That's, that's wonderful. Um, but speaking of uh, amazing things, we also have uh, limited edition. I need you guys to head over and uh, pick up the brand new limited edition Side Scrollers All-Star T-shirt available right now through the end of April or until they're gone. As Richard Fitz, as I said that, picked one up. Right now, the side scrolls are for limited edition baseball tee. It says, hey, Craig, Blaz, Melody, and side scroll hers. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Richard. Great to see you. You're going to look great in that shirt. The brand new side scrolls all-star t-shirt. Uh, we have 60, oh, I'm sorry, 58 of those left as Richard just picked one of those up. So that's awesome. So go pick one of those up right now. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, I'd also like to remind you guys to take games back. Head over to takegamesback.com and learn more about the journey over there. Uh, I launched that last week. Hopefully you guys head over there and uh, check it out because today, more than ever, is, is, is a great example of why it's important we take games back. Um, so yeah, we're off to a killer start as Alma John came in with the two. Says, yo, Melanie, I canceled my Planet Fitness two days ago. Let's go! <laughs> Good, Good job. job. Big win for women. <laughs> Tomok says, I would like to thank Microsoft for admitting that they don't like money, but... <laughs> <laughs> by, by what they, but they, well, by what they told the devs. What do they tell the devs? What do they? Uh, what do yeah, they say? I just finished filming filming a video about that. I'm posting that uh, uh, after the show. But yeah, so basically, they they gave all these guidelines that they want for video game characters. And long story short, it's pretty much blending the the gender lines. It's oh well. Are female characters just like the male characters, or are are you enforcing any any harmful stereotypes with the characters and how they look? And are, do the male characters have a full range of emotions? Are they sad? Are they vulnerable? <laughs> what? Don't forget the uh, the gender barrier, whatever that. Yeah, means. yeah. I swear, it's it's cringe. What the. What, what did you just, I don't even know what you just said. The words you just said, I'm extremely confused. The gender barrier. What is, what is this? Yeah. One of their first points underneath it, when they talk about not displaying shapely or curvy women, they specifically use the language. Does your character have gender barriers? Yeah. I've never heard that before in biology. Oh um, curvy hips is, you know, just a trait that you have. It's not a barrier because you can't control that. I thought we embraced body body positivity and curvy hips no. and curviness. No, we're not doing no, that. Not now. Lizzo. That that's out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, only for Lizzo. <laughs> wow. Okay. So so now now we're fat phobic. Is that what's going on? Is that what the idea is? Because well, I think fat's okay because fat blurs the lines between male and female bodies. So uh, when some that that if you really want to pass as the opposite gender, just get really fat. It's very difficult to tell Just the difference. Just get the sugar foot and you'll be okay. <laughs> what was that movie? Uh, was it Wally? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, and you just couldn't, you couldn't oh really like, tell between. Like, I think that's what they all want. That's maybe that's what all video games will be moving forward. We all and all the characters just look like Wally. Yeah. And they're all waddling around trying to. <laughs> 
It's crazy. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Tomac, and thank you for that, Melanie. Appreciate that. Uh, wild, wild O T Baggins <laughs> came in with the five. <laughs> this place to sub to you. Wildo. You know, what's that? Wildo instead of Bilbo. Wildo oh. T Baggins. Okay. I don't understand that reference. Yeah, What's because you haven't know, seen Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like, exactly. Which, by the way, I, I found out about. And I'm, and I'm very, listen, I can go into mom mode like this. <laughs> Are y'all surprised? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a I super power that you get when you become a mom. I want to guilt you for the next 10 minutes over that, Craig. It's a best I do it ever. at least once a week. <laughs> You're not even Never seen yet. Lord it's, of the Rings it's in your genetic makeup. He has it. He See, has Savvy, look at that. Look at that. Even the DEI is mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> bye boy. Anyway, all right. Now that we have bye boy. Right. Hello. Yeah, I can. I can. Oh damn it. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> so, Wildo. Wildo. Yeah, Wildo T Baggins yes. says best place to sub. Do you see? So make the highest percentage. Uh, locals. Locals uh, is is the best place to do that for sure. Uh, over at sidescrollers.locals.com. That is the highest res split. And uh, technically, I guess. Technically, I guess it would be Rumble because Rumble has a 100% zero payout, but they're going to change that in time. Mm -hmm. um, but Locals has been pretty consistent. But thanks for that's a great Locals question. Rumble and really, kick. Yes. Uh, Miku says, started to look uh, like Blizzard here. What did you do? Thanks, Miku. Appreciate that. I invited <laughs> a bunch of women on the show, which is great. Uh, Drive by Commoner says, this demanding to quote be seen is a byproduct of parasocial social media. Gaming through the sixth slash seventh gen did not have such insecurity. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of truth in that. Thanks so much, Drive by Commenter. Uh, Viper says, "I like I hit the like button Gundam style." This is right. Gangnam style. Oh, <laughs> like, Gangnam it's, style. It's because Sorry. I put the poll. I put the poll. Says, "How are you slapping the like button?" And the options are politely poking. Bashed it or Will Smith style. Means oh. <laughs> That's good. Speaking of Will Smith, did you see the uh the trailer for Bad Boys 4? Did you see that? Oh, really yeah, it's out, isn't it? No, I think the trailer is at least, but yeah, it was, yeah, you no, know. I mean the trailer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. It was it was bad boys. It was you know? a trailer. It was <laughs> they're a little bit okay. older. Okay. Okay. You know, but we'll see how it goes. I mean I don't know. Bad Boys, it, was, it seems like it was such a product of its time, but I guarantee this will also be a product of its time. So we'll see. Oh, joy. Max says, with the Gamergate 2 fiasco, it seems like Alyssa Mercante and company have taken new jobs as cargo ship pilots in Baltimore Harbor. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, oh. Too soon! Too soon! Oh. That's horrible. Oh. Oh, Somebody wrote that, that in the comments. I saw the comment on it, and it was like, uh, it must have been a female captain. Oh. <laughs> but in all seriousness, no, it like, was... you, do, you do wonder like that this is a problem throughout whole society, mm -hmm. like that merit based is not is 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 not being prioritized in all jobs you know I did, so you do quite yeah. wonder what happened in that well situation. i saw a tweet about it was all dudes from india like that's so the tweet that i saw Hello. was Hello. so Hello. apparently they left their phones to drive a ship <laughs> wait no hold on Oh, hold on, we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, we, we got a lot to talk about with this partnership thing today. Um, especially if it has to do with Indian dudes leaving their phone, leave, leaving the ship. To, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. They were trying to drive a ship while they were on the phone. Oh my gosh. Doing call center work and on their computers. What? Putting like tutorials I'm hitting crash, and watch development working. tutorials. Like it was, it's a lot to do at once. No, they were again. having electrical problems supposedly. So yeah. maybe they were draining the battery. The yep, that was it. it. That was it. Oh, oh man, geez. we're on fire today. It's great. Maybe they plugged in their hair dryer and it like blew a fuse and the entire ship went down. <laughs> Sandman says, waiting for the day you bring the great Muppet Rudai on onto Side Scrolls. One of my favorite podcasts to watch. 199. Thanks, Sandman. I appreciate that. Rudai's uh, been Rudai, on multiple times. He's been on the show before. This is great. Hey, Benny's Gaming Addict came in as a brand new member. That's awesome today. Thank you very much. Genuinely appreciate that. And Kay gifted five memberships to the channel. Heck yeah. Let's go. Yay! Yay! Thanks, Kay. Really appreciate that. Can I That's, just say, I like, Kay was so awesome. I watched her the whole four-hour special you did. 
a couple of weeks ago on Sweet Baby Inc. It was and Gamergate. It was so good. It was so so good. I very informative. And Kay was awesome on there. It just I've been like wanting to message her and tell her that. So I'm just gonna say it right now. <laughs> Kay, she wants to be your girlfriend. It's great. There you go. <laughs> hey, Pastor Dave says blink once, Craig. If you're not in danger, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hobo Cop also came in and says, love you all, Christ is King. Thanks, Hobo Cop. Appreciate that. And G2 Drummer says, just created a profile uh, to follow on Locals. Ah, and you will get notifications, friend, over there. Excellent. Thank you so much, G2 Drummer. For the Emperor came in and says, lots of female representation. Craig, call in reinforcements. That's right. <laughs> get Dan Vask. He'd fit right in. Uh, thanks for the Emperor. Appreciate that. The Baron says, Christ is King. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, the Baron. And Andrew came in and says, read with read with Indian accent. Yes, go ahead, uh, Blab. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and, and, hello, this is Sandeep. How am I? Oh, boom. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> didn't expect that. I, I didn't read through that this before. This is some dark to humor it. today. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, mean, I, and I did not mean you? dark as in skin color. <laughs> <laughs> Racist. <laughs> uh, Blake says, uh, "Christ is king, and if you don't affirm my beliefs, you're a bigot." That's how this works, right? Uh, thanks, Blake. And the dude says, "Wait, this isn't Simcast." Uh, dude. Blake came in with the two says, "Taco Tuesday." It is Taco Tuesday, isn't it? Let's That's talk right. about it. And uh, Shane came in with a. $50 super chat. I'm sorry. Rumble rant says Craig, not only she is cooler, more talented and a better reader, but lady Desiree's dono wall puts yours to shame. <laughs> According to today's world, I must publicly shame you. Hashtag do better. Craig, what is up with your donor? <laughs> Actually I do. I, uh, he always likes to comment on all my, mine is better than yours. I'm going to show you real quick. Let me see. Oh, wow. There we go. There it is. Those oh, are all my cute. those are all my subs. Oh, that's cool. that is so I like better. that. Aww. That I'm is like so cool. much better. <laughs> oh my god. All I have is stupid sticky notes and colors. It's ridiculous. Yeah, she she let she turned the music notes into hearts. That's adorable. That's classic. I was I was thinking about making them little pickles because I thought that'd be <gasps> cute. Oh yeah. yeah. That is cute. There's a whole right. bunch of pickles on the wall. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Pick the pickle. You know wall. what you need? Actually, here's what? here's a good one. You can write people's names on the bottom of a variety of rubber duckies, and they can be your DEI ducks, and then you can have a little swimming pool in the back and try to fill Aww, it up every month. How cute. <laughs> yeah, Craig can have a pond behind him. Yeah, yeah right you now. got the space for it. Perfect. The DEI ducks. The DEI pond. Mm. <laughs> All right. Nice. I love it. The pond of opportunity. Uh, <laughs> the worthy one says if it's any if it's any uh consultation i think mel could actually take a listen a fight mel does 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 give off a i ain't a killer but don't push me vibe sometimes <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i don't think i would win i'm not like she's definitely a lot sturdier than i am uh it's butch i don't think i would win that fight <laughs> well, also I, I think it's odd that a woman's reaction is to to ask to fight in the first place not gonna lie because mm -hmm. that didn't even cross my mind <laughs> do you feel a proper a proper response should have been a cake baking contest uh, yeah now i could win that <laughs> i actually could I like, sandwich contest. <laughs> <laughs> that's, sandwich that's, that's how you should have responded hey i can make a better sandwich than you right? oh <laughs> all right now you're speaking my language cook a better steak <laughs> there you go uh hemrod came in uh, hemroid came in said, look at all the pretty ladies <laughs> Yet all I want is you, Craig. Hold me tender and tell me it's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, not going to happen. Sparta Chris came in and says, Scripture of the day, Melanie. Something for the most important week uh, ever for Christians. Also, Christ is King. Oh, I would say Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That was quite a scripture. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, Miku says, DSP has outlived the Baltimore Bridge. Oh, no. Oh, my God. What's up, man? <laughs> uh, Abby, do you know who DSP is? Dark Side Phil? You ever heard that may, name before? May I think so. Consider yourself lucky. 
That's all. That's, that's just, okay. just know that he's, he's just con- you're good. You kids in your drama. No, it's great. Uh, Kristen, <laughs> Watt, drama, uh, speaking of uh, drama, says, "Hi, Lady Desiree. I'm trying to get my son into de- into developing talent. I tried to re- I tried to teach him wrestling, but he just choked. He's learning the piano hard." Um, <laughs> You, you know Chris Benoit? I do not. <laughs> okay, don't oh, respond. To it. Don't yeah, respond don't, to it. don't, don't answer. No. Don't, don't respond. Just okay. A, just yeah. All right. Nightmare says Mel should agree uh, to fight if she can get Hassan Piker to fight Sam Hyde. Janice said, came in and says minstrel period talk today maybe. <laughs> also, I think your merch is a no limited edition size girl hers belt bag. Thanks. There you go, Janice. Uh, no, we will not be discussing the first part of that. Second half, second part of that. Thank you. Great idea. And Andrew came in and says I could fight Alyssa for you, Mel. For you, Melanie. I still have a little bit of fat, uh, a little bit of fat to pass as a woman. Plus, I'll fight you, fight for you any day. There you go. Thank you, there Andrew. You go, Andrew. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. All right. Uh, let's get going uh ladies once again glad you've uh, joined us today we have so much to talk about uh thank you guys very much for your super chats to start the day all the memberships we're currently sitting at 26 which is great and i'd also like to point out that i'm a farty little daddy came in with these 699 <laughs> super <laughs> look at that no avatar message. i love his wario it's like a, a distinguished wario he's got his glasses <laughs> and the, the comb over uh, he's classy, classy. Oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. I love reading, reading names like that. I'm a farty little daddy. All right, uh, let's get into it, ladies. It's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for hard news. Hard news. Yeehaw! Oh! ladies as always we like to start with some quick hits in the video game spaces god knows we got a lot a lot of hard important things to talk about uh really important things but let's start off some nice little nice little softballs for everybody as uh we have a rumor that sonic heroes may be making a comeback here with some rumors suggesting that 3d platformer uh may be making a comeback igniting speculation about the futures uh franchise's future did anybody play Sonic Heroes back in the day? Anybody familiar with this one I at did. all? I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Savvy, your thoughts on this? I'm excited. If they bring this one back, then I-, I think it was probably one of their better games. But I'm a big Sonic Adventure person as well. And I've been waiting for the Chow Garden to come back. So this is just one step mm-hmm. closer to what I actually want. But the story for Sonic Heroes was fun. And I loved the concept. Having it, would you like to see a remake or would you like to see a continuation of the story? Remake. Remake. Just a total total uh, uh, remake of the original game? I would take a remake because I, after all this time to do a continuation, yeah, it might be interesting, but there's, I mean, yes, they can obviously go in any direction they want, but it just felt like there, there were only so many things that they could do. So if they could fix some of the problems in the original, because it still was lacking. I remember a lot of people complained about the sensitivity or the controlling or like angling when you're trying to shoot people. Um, so if they can fix some of that, that would, I think, be better than just continuing the story. But I'm also, I'm fine with nostalgia bait. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Just make it good and make it look pretty. That's all. That's all I want. I think Based. most people are too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I think most people are for sure. I mean, you know, Mel just just picked up the Tomb Raider trilogy remastered, and and she was all about that nostalgia bait. That right? is exactly what I wanted. Nostalgia bait that looks pretty, and that's what they gave us. So I was like, yes, finally, <laughs> they delivered. Uh, Des, did you play any uh, Sonic Heroes back in the day? I did. Yeah, that was a really fun game. I'm always interested when they remake it to hear how the music updates because the music capabilities are just so much better now. And obviously, that's my my big passion. And I love gaming music. So, like when they redid Ducktales, I loved the original Ducktales. I loved it. And then I love the re the remastered version of it because the music was phenomenal. What they did. So I like it just for that reason alone but yeah if you can have good visuals and good music i'm all for the the nostalgia remakes for sure what is the best best remake you've seen 
Yeah, I, I think of DuckTales Remastered. DuckTales Remastered was phenomenal when it came back. Um, can y'all think of any off the top of your head that where you're like, wow, that's awesome? I think of uh, just to kind of throw a couple out DuckTales Remastered, uh, Street Fighter 2, uh, the Super Street Fighter 2, like hand drawn version that came back, came out like a decade ago, was really, really good. Um, any off the top of your head? Mel, I'm sure you're probably thinking Tomb Raider. <laughs> oh, any remaster, good remasters? Uh, yeah. Just yeah, Tomb Raider. I liked the the Perfect Dark remaster as well. That was great. Um, Chat seems yeah. like they have a lot of lot of ideas here. They have the Shadow Colossus. Oh, Shadow of the Colossus cool. remake mm. was really good. It was great. <laughs> um, and I mean, I think that the Resident Evil remakes are good. Uh, I mean, for the most part, I didn't really like three all that much. I mean, it was okay, but two I thought was fantastic. Oh yeah, Metroid Prime as well. Yeah, Metroid Prime came in. That was a uh, really good one, Eyes of Night. Good stuff right there. And uh, Rebound, Rebound came in and says, the DuckTales theme is now stuck in your head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Rebound. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right, let's go on to another uh, another little quick hit. This may this may go into a little bit deeper <laughs> than, than just a quick hit here. And we've, we've touched on this the last few days, but Pokemon appears to be making some changes, friends. And Pokemon Go uh, has added some changes here, changing the uh, women to be less women mm -hmm. and more androgynous. You can see the changes here from learning the law as uh, they've re straight up removed chest, <laughs> modified hip, expanded the chin, broadened the shoulders, and deleted the makeup, making the characters far more androgynous. Savvy, you said you are a big Pokemon fan. Um, how do you feel about this? This is probably one of the most painful things that I've ever seen. Nobody asked for this. We know that they're trying to bring the models more in line with the Scarlet and Violet style. And if you know anything about those characters and the character models, there's barely any difference between the male and female. Mm -hmm. um, they did a lot more than just remove the hips as well. They also changed the way that the arms fundamentally look to where it's actually anatomically incorrect. Um, and it's... I have not seen a single person praise a, any of those changes. Yeah. Everyone universally says that it looks worse. And I don't know who's doing this. I don't know why Niantic would do that. But they're also kind of doing their own thing. If you look into some of the stuff that Niantic's doing and signing up with and aligning with, it's kind of mm -hmm. DEI, very Western. Got to remove the Eastern storytelling elements and basic anatomy. Yeah. Right. I think the stance is so weird too. And they did this with reboot Lara Croft as well is they mm -hmm. have them just standing like this legs apart, arms out, just a straight stance. Like nobody stands like that. Women, we, we, we have our hip out like in that oh, yeah. original yeah. first picture. That's a normal way to stand. Nobody stands like this. <laughs> no normal <laughs> woman stands like this. And they have the exact same stance with Reboot Lara Croft as well. It's the weirdest thing. They are terrified of a little hip action going on. Of some natural, okay, hip, it exists. They don't want that. How do you, as women, feel about almost, I don't know, lack of a better word, or the erasing of women in video games to make them more boyish or androgynous or, I don't know, I would... How do you feel about that? I feel like my jokes are partially to blame because I used to say regularly, hey, I know I look like a 12-year-old boy, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an adult, so I'm sorry, guys. The DEI represent representative here accidentally <laughs> ruined women in video games. Uh, they all look like me now, just a log. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is, is I think, you know, I don't have the, the a super curvy body type either. I think we are considered hyper feminine compared to these new characters. That's one thing they accomplished with that. Yeah, I've never <laughs> felt so girly in my life. I know. <laughs> I know. It's funny. Wow. But I think uh, this is also reflected in society in general right now, the erasure of women we're seeing these dylan mulvaney's these men larping as women taking over uh modeling jobs they're doing like the, they're becoming women of the year they're the face of women it's men and and now it 
got this Planet Fitness stuff going on. A man uh, is in the locker room and a woman has a problem with it and she gets kicked out. She gets her membership taken away. Uh, so we're just seeing all across the board uh, women being erased. And now they can't even, now you can't even catch Pokemon without being I boys. know. Ridiculous. <laughs> Well, this has been going a, like for a while now with all these triple A games. I mean, if you look at even Elden Ring, they didn't have like male and female. They had like type one, type two. Hogwarts Legacy, the characters were very, very androgynous to pick from. And it was shitty selective. And you could literally go and change every detail, like the nose and the eyes of Hogwarts Legacy. And they were still very similar, boy to female. You could, it's just, it's, it's depressing because it's happening in mm -hmm. all games, unless you go back and play all the old like early 2000s video games or don't even bother with triple a games some some of the double a games are still okay but it's just it's really shitty and depressing it's like why can't women just look like women it's not that hard yeah no no one's upset that a woman looks hot except for the clown people living in the mother's basements with blue yep. hair. <laughs> that's it it's everywhere like even the current fashion <laughs> i hate it like i went to go to a pair of jeans the other day and they're supposed to be I thought it was like, was, it, was there a face for your crotch? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it wasn't that point. far. But like, I wanted to get a flare. It said like 90s too. Like the style was like 90s flare. Okay, like I lived in the 90s. I know what 90s flare jeans were. That's they what were I fitted. like. They were fitted through the, the thigh and the hips yep. to show you have hips. And then they flare like past yep. the knee. Okay, I go to get a try on these pair of jeans and there's like no body shaping at all it's just like if i were was wearing mm -hmm. a guy's pairs of jeans and like Yikes. it pissed me off so much like i actually almost had a little breakdown <laughs> in the changing room because it's just like my gosh everywhere like this is a problem everywhere and what kills me is when the feminists get behind this like how can you call yourself a feminist and get behind all this mess they're just yeah. they're trying to erase us I'm looking at you emma watson hi it's <laughs> true Good old Emma, huh? Mm. Hard. <laughs> oh, she's all like, ah, oh, trans women are the same as women. It's like, no, biologically not. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way to like what Desiree was saying, clothing. Why Why do we have to suffer for clothing now too? And she's totally right. Everything looks trash now. We look like we're wearing oh, yeah. like garbage bags over us. Yeah, like, okay, totally we have dumpy. curves. <laughs> yeah, nah. Well, you know, there's always, uh, Anne Hathaway can always fight for Gentle you. Half the hate. <laughs> she was making all the news in the last couple of days about all this half a hate, which I didn't what? even know the thing. Yeah, it's called half a hate where she won her Oscars back in the day and everyone was giving her hate because she won the Oscars and she was too energetic. She was too pretty. She was too that. So she went and cried about it. And she's like, I survived this hatred of the Internet back in 2013. <laughs> oh, it's like, wow. Wow. I don't remember any of this. It was actually called half a hate. There's a whole bunch of articles on it. I was almost going to put in the document, but I was like, what is this? Who ever heard of half a hate? So yeah. Listen, I would okay. never, never, ever, ever say this to you ladies, but this is what I have to say to Anne Hathaway. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> My hero. <laughs> Unreal. Wow. No, no, no. This is the one you gotta use. Where is it? Where's the slap a bitch one? Oh yeah. Anymore. Here yeah, it is. Fault. Sometimes you gotta slap a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> God, I sound horrible on this show. This is great. Um, all right, let's go to another quick hit here as we will we will continue to monitor with their ear to the ground the ongoing po Pokemon saga, which is uh, ridiculous. Uh, hey, if you're, if you're if it's first time tuning in, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and join us. Uh, obviously, we got a, a great show every single Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Also, hit the thumbs up button. We'd really appreciate that as we grow a little bit more every single day. All right. This has nothing to do with video games or entertainment, but it is world news. And uh, it's just more than anything, bat shit effing crazy. As uh, we saw this cargo ship uh, run into this bridge in Baltimore and the entire effing thing collapsed. Actually, I want to use this one here. I was looking at this all wrong uh, earlier as the ship is coming in from the other side of the bridge. Um, I didn't see this the first time around, but you can kind of see it here as this bridge loses power. And then it, it re power. yes, this is a uh, this was a cargo ship making its way in, and this is absolutely crazy as it loses power twice. I, I don't know what the thick smoke is going on here, but uh, or what that has to do with anything, 
outside of they just wanted to point that out. Goodness. But just right into it, direct. I mean, it couldn't have been a more perfect shot. And you see it, it's going to run into this right here. It obviously holding the bridge up. And runs it turns into a barrier. so sharply. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like they were trying to trying to save it. You can see them trying to turn it. I don't I don't think this was malicious. Um right. But especially with the power outages and stuff. But I hell, I don't even know. Unless it was all uh, planned. Yeah. But you can see it runs into it here, and then almost immediately, boom, which is just crazy. Now that's in double speed, but it, it eviscerates the entire bridge, which I don't even know what to say about this. Out of it's just like it's shocking. And look at that white van that just gets across in time. Oh my yeah, goodness! All those vehicles just boom. Yeah, I, I've watched this several times, and m the bridge is clear of pretty much all all the cars, with the exception of these up here. And these are and like, like yeah. one and there right were some. There. I think it said there were some workers on there as yeah, well. Yeah, I heard yeah. that too. Yeah, it's and this is just crazy. Here it is in real time. Do we have any updates on like casualties or anything like that? Um, well, the last I the day, saw, I thought. Yeah, go ahead. Go, what were you saying, Dad? I'm sorry. Oh no, just that I thought that there might have been a few, but they were um, there were like 40 in injuries for sure. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just it's just crazy to think about, and the the thing for me that's most fascinating about that is that. It hit one structure on the bridge. Yeah, it it, it hit one yeah. one spot, and we you see you see the impact that it made, and that was enough to take down the entire bridge. Uh, if we were to go in and look at this one more time, like oh. they hit one one portion of it right there, and I mean just boom straight on down like a sack of potatoes, man. That's crazy mm. to think. Yeah, about. chat you is saying be better that made than that. You know, you think that they oh. would ha be able to withstand? I mean, I don't know. No, nah, I, I had to do like tough. construction work um, back in college, and we had to build like trusses and all that. And like one thing goes down, if it's not built, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a big, big ass ship, man. It was a yeah. big ass ship, mm -hmm. and it ran in there. That it, it... is saying that they found two people and seven are missing right now. Okay, so well, we will trust the all update. on that. Yeah, it's crazy, but I mean, it. I, I just think of all those people that were that were crossing this bridge. You know, you know that that within just a few seconds. Yeah. I mean, this, this guy right here. It's it's one twenty six in the morning, one twenty and fifty five seconds. And you look at this, and it's now twenty seconds later, twenty five seconds later. I mean, within a minute. Or these guys right here, they're like within a minute. If they miss, let's say, think about how fragile that is. The idea that not not the bridge, but life. Just the the aspect of of had they hit a stoplight or missed a stoplight or been stopped at a, at a corner or something like that. Yeah. And they took, that, they were a minute late, like, Holy moly. Like who mind blowing. It's crazy to think about, but obviously but apparently the entire crew was, uh, it was an Indian crew. Like, uh, so that from those jokes we made, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's nuts, man. Um, she's, Let's go to something else that's uh, also pretty crazy. As uh, Florida, this is this came down yesterday, and uh, this is very hotly contested on the internet. Uh, very, a lot of people have strong opinions on this. Florida will ban anyone under fourteen owning a social media account uh, from January twenty twenty five, deleting existing accounts. The bill was signed by uh, Florida Governor DeSantis um, yesterday. And uh, Savvy, you're saying that's incorrect. That is. That that the way that's phrased is wrong, banning anyone under the age of 14. Yeah, it was my understanding that it would just require parental consent for them to join. It's not a straight up ban. But at the end of the day, that's technically how it should be. And the fact that anybody yeah. sees a problem with this, they don't they are just ignorant or a child themselves because Twitter I mean, we've, we've all had this discussion before. Twitter, Twitch, all the softcore porn or the porn. Yep. All of those things should make those websites 18 plus. Anywhere mm -hmm. that you have easy access to nudity, it should be 18 plus regardless or whatever the country's law is for an adult. Uh, the fact that I am also, as an adult, subjected at any moment in time to what a 14-year-old might think should be considered a hate crime. I don't need my <laughs> time wasted 
Nobody else <laughs> needs their time wasted by the opinion of a 14 year old. Yes. <laughs> like, I don't care if that's a hot take or not. I agree. Get off the internet. I agree. <laughs> so just think of like people trying to pick arguments with us on these anime avatars and stuff. There's a chance mm -hmm. that's a 14 year old wasting our time. <laughs> you know, let me say this. The there's there's one thing you said something very profound and it's going to tie into everything that we said the idea that you should waste your time listening to what a 14 or 13 year old has to say the the whole thing that happened yesterday with the uh the game developer who was like i'm i'm gonna have uh zero out of six of our playable characters are white men right she came out she said that thing and she said she'd been harassed um and my thing is a lot of the quote unquote harassment that I feel that people see in the gaming space comes from those 13 or 14 year old yeah. kids because we were all 13 and 14 at one point and we all said stupid fucking things. But those things are then put up on a put up on a pedestal yeah. and those are used as examples of look at how toxic the gaming community is like, shut the fuck up. I don't know. I, I, but I think there's a lot of truth in, in what you said, Savvy, um, for sure, for sure. Um, Blabs, what are your thoughts on this? You you do not have children. No. So I would love to hear your thoughts on, on this idea. Well, I'm or very much it. for parents having the control and, you know, actually parent their children. I don't like when governments are saying what children should be doing. I always hate that. But this is kind of like a fine line. This is literally the government saying, hey, parents are going to give the consent. And that is it. And that, for me, that's fine. If they would be like not children are never going to be allowed on the internet that's it parents have no say then i'd be like no get fucked government i mean i say that anyway but in this particular space like moment i'd be like no this is okay so i honestly looking into this law when they're saying not parents are going to give consent i'm okay with it i have no problems with it whatsoever uh, the law itself says a social media platform shall prohibit a minor who is 14 or 15 years of age from entering into a contract with a social media platform to become an account holder. And I think that that is one thing that that people lose track of. When you sign a terms of service, that's technically a contract. That is a contract. Yeah. So how could a minor be entering in a, into a contract in that situation to begin with? And the language that you use there, that's why I said that without parental consent. So if you read that, legally speaking, they can technically be online. It's just the account holder has to be the adult. So they're the one who is, at the end of the day, responsible for the account. It's the same thing with the Blizzard Terms of Service, where they say, oh, if you're toxic on your account, it's still your account. It doesn't matter if somebody else touched it, like if you were to get banned off Overwatch for whatever. Um so, so it's it's the same idea. And so the people who are saying, oh, it's the government overstepping. One, the people saying that, well, you typically like your overstepping because you want them to regulate hate speech. But two, <laughs> it's not because it's, it's again, it's bringing it back to parents have to actually parent because mm, Twitter right. is advertised as 13 plus or whatever. Right. They may not be aware of how easy it is to see the porn bots saying nudes yep. in bio. <laughs> I will say yep. this as a, as a parent, Look, we do not. I have an 11 year old daughter. Actually, I have a 12 year old daughter today. Aww, um, <laughs> it's 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 terrifying. <laughs> um, I can imagine ha having a 12 year old daughter in middle school who her friends have cell phones. Right. And uh, she's like, can I have a cell phone? No, you may not have a cell phone. <laughs> Absolutely not. You may not have a cell phone. Now, uh, my wife is like, hey, we should I, I want to make sure she gets where she's going. You know, she may have whatever practice that's nearby and i want to you know and I, I understand all of those things uh but i it's very hard because once you it, it's the old toothpaste analogy right once yeah. you squeeze the toothpaste out it's very hard to get it back in and well yeah all old school options. flip phone where she can that's only text on it that's what i had options. when i was a young kid because uh, my parents gave my sister and i a phone every time we we're on a field trip and it was just for emergencies we'd call and be like hi i'm here okay close I had right. no texting. I didn't even have data until I was 20, guys. Just saying. That's why Years that's ago. why you are who you are, Blab. <laughs> I love that because that's similar to how the, the us who are older than older than you live. That's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. We weren't mm -hmm. doing all that. Like we didn't have all that. Technology. I relied on Wi-Fi, man. I was like, give me the Wi-Fi. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> I'll say this. I, I know I'm probably a little older than everybody here, but I, I feel like my generation is the luckiest generation because 
I grew up without without the internet. And I also grew up with the internet. I had a full childhood that I was able to experience going outside and playing sports and living and not having to worry about the screen and et cetera, et cetera, uh, screen time and all these things. And, uh, you know, I remember when AOL was sending out CDs to people for an hour of <laughs> internet time and, yeah. and these things and, and going through that entire process. So when people ask me about like, you know, uh, my, my thoughts on the internet today and social media and everything, I, I say avoid it as much as you possibly can. I mean, I, I literally have made my living on social media for 18 years. Uh, but I still say if I could trade, I, if I could trade my career for not having social media, I absolutely would do that. You know, um, just it's, it's, uh, for the betterment of society. <laughs> I think we're better off, um, without, yeah. without social media. So why I make it, kids? I, I make it a point to on weekends, like just try not to be on social media that much on weekends. I'm with my family on their little farm. And so it's like, oh, okay, can we get you on Saturday for this podcast? Or usually the answer is going to be no. I, I need my weekends to be out on the farm. <laughs> I don't I don't want to deal with this every single day. Got to touch grass, man. Yes. Touch that grass. Quite literally. Great. <laughs> yeah, the emphasis to move into the tech world has, I think, been more damaging for humanity as a whole. Imagine if instead of people commuting 40, 40, 40 minutes for like an, an office job, they commuted 40 minutes to go work on a damn farm. Mm -hmm. Not only would that be more beneficial to humans as a whole, but everybody would be happier. Because if you're sitting idle at a desk, too, and then you're just scrolling through social media, you're not doing anything of value. Yep. You're not, you know, doing anything for your brain that's healthy. I actually read this really amazing article the other day. It was from The Telegraph, and it was interviewing young kids, like teenagers and early 20-year-olds in the United Kingdom. And so many of these kids were saying, nah, fuck college, fuck sitting at a desk. I'm going to go sheep shear, uh, shear sheep, I should say, fish, create Yay. saddles for horses. They were doing all this agriculture stuff, and they were so happy they're like yep. i'm not making a whole lot but i'm happy i'm debt free i don't have to worry about yes. talking to all these people i don't like it's like yes society so there is some positivity to guys because i love it yeah because they're doing work and they're seeing mm -hmm. accomplishment and that's mm -hmm. how you develop actual self-worth is that yeah. you you do you do something you good and you feel and you see your results you know that's what's missing that's why so many mm -hmm. people are broken today is because they don't actually have self-worth because they're mm -hmm. not doing anything of value mm -hmm. Right. And there's so much truth in that. So much truth in that. Um, before we move on, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that Shamza came in and donated $1,000. <gasps> what? <laughs> Thank you, show. Shamza. Holy crap. Wow. Look at that. Damn. Oh, unreal. Damn. <laughs> Craig, we gotta play it. Can I play it? Yes, play it. Yeah, developers. Developers, 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 developers. Yes. Yes. Wow. Let me see them Steve Ballmers in the chat, please. And crowns in the chat for Shamza. Shamza, thank you so much. That is. Ridiculously generous, and yes, Shamza, back on the wall you go. Wonderful, glad you glad you glad joined us today. Yes, look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Wow. Um, we okay. We have uh, an update on the Melanie Mac Kotaku story as Melanie is hanging out yes. right there next to me. Uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But first, Kratos El Kratos came in with a twenty dollar direct donation. Says disclaimer. Kratos Indian IT services do not operate out of a cargo <laughs> vessel. We keep an Indian employee busy 24-7, so they don't have time for anything else. Oh, thanks, Kratos. Appreciate that. And uh, Varen came in with the $10 direct donation. Says, PSA, it's Creek Week, divers. Uh, we're taking back Malevolent Creek from those damn clankers for, for a good time. Also, uh, thank, thank you. For, I'm guessing that's a Hell Divers reference. Thank Clank you very much. Battlefront. I'm assuming Star Wars, the droids. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there it says also fluffy size side scroller shirts win. Uh, F you two for blocking this. Can't stop, won't stop. Peace, Baron. Um, I think shirts. I got to double check on on the size of the shirts we can go up to, but I will uh, definitely do a little digging to see how how 
how fluffy we can get. Uh, Winston says, I really like your show. It's informative with what's going on in the entertainment, uh, with entertainment across the board. And I really like all the panelists on the show. You're probably one of the most wholesome podcasts that I watch too. Much love, guys. Hey, Winston. Thanks. Appreciate that. If you were to ask somebody else, they'd say we're giant bigots. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we we're get t-shirts bigots. that just say giant bigots. Wholesome oh, giant it. bigots. Wholesome, wholesome bigots. bigots. That's right. There you go. Can I be little bigot? <laughs> <laughs> just a little, little bigot. Little bigot. <laughs> And uh, Calvin came in and says, guys on the stream, Mel- uh, guys on the stream, Melanie too. get Stellar Blade when it comes out, make a statement. And on Steam, there's a demo made by China called The Killing Antidote. It's a Resident Evil style game. China and Korea are making better females. Uh, thank you. Oh, jiggle physics it. for the win. Once again, that uh, game is called Killing Antidote, if you want to check that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andrew came in with the $20 super chat says, Melanie, I uh, played through the first game and there's a magical artifact that, that makes Laura, Laura, sorry, uh, see visions of the past to a precursor race. And even the villain is from the, uh, from that race in assassins as, as assassins creed, just rip off from tomb Raider. Uh, I don't know if I would call it that. I'm not, I'm not super, I don't I don't know a lot about Assassin's Creed lore, but um yeah. I I, I think it's different enough. But that is an interesting comparison. <laughs> Guacquium Guacquium says, uh, but if the kids will be blocked from social media, how will we and in- how will they get indoctrinated <laughs> in the Rainbow Collective? Also, these activists would not survive the Call of Duty chat rooms from 2006. Thank you. Guacquium. I won't Appreciate play the chat. Rob on wheels came in and says, I wrote a song that spoke into, uh, spoke into one of yesterday's story stories. Uh, when your life is a farce and it eels up your arse. <laughs> That's a <laughs> shitty bit. Uh, yeah. Yesterday blabs blabs. Would you like to tell the, uh, young ladies we have on panel about yeah. the wonderful story? Mm-hmm. Yesterday, some, I found an article about a person I believe it was Vietnam. I think it was a Vietnamese man. He had a 12 inch eel up his anus. <laughs> And it had to be so. surgically removed, 12 inches. Ooh. Welcome to Science Scrollers, You savvy. know why that uh, is. Why is that, Savvy? So, so in some places in the world, it is uh, an interesting cultural exploration to, to take sea life and <gasps> pick it up and your rectum. Plug. So it was on purpose? Most... Most likely, it's possible he just went for a swim and the eel was looking for a oh cave my to live in. And he just happened to be fresh off of an escapade. And while he was there. He's sitting there with his butt up and, butt up and open. He's like, come on in, but boys. Also, now, I <laughs> did. <laughs> flatsam, flatsam and Jetsam from Little Mermaid. Right. Oh, no. Is an like in, an, <laughs> in another country, there is some sort of like parasite little creature that will that will bury itself in male urethras mm-hmm. when that, that's in um, lakes and Appar- rivers yeah. yeah apparently that's very painful mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah in in, oh, in japan just... there are some places where you can have an octopus uh put on your lady bits and oh what <laughs> where do you think tentacle hentai comes from? <gasps> oh yeah it all makes sense now it's oh, real. Gross. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> so, huh. Wow. I just look for says, science. Push ups came in. I'm going to transition away from that. <laughs> no, you're not. Lady, I have a question. If the rest of the animal kingdom can, uh, can eject useless crap out of their ecosystems by natural selection, why is it taking humanity so long to eject useless woke, woke crap? Uh, that's a great question, push ups. <laughs> I, I will say this. Uh, humans have quite the hubris to think that they're the most ex- uh, advanced species out there. But wolves don't let the stupid lead them. Otherwise, there'd be no wolf. <laughs> so we are at an interesting crossroads because we are at a point where the the biologically unfit, this doesn't mean necessarily fat or anything like that, but the unfit individuals have a means of survival in our society because we value life even if it's not beneficial to the entirety of the species. When you look at wolves, they will protect some of their elderly, of course, you know, they are sentimental creatures, but they don't go to the lengths that we do 
And Mm -hmm. I'm not saying at all that we should let people die or anything like that. But when you just look at the biological differences and where we're at, it kind of explains how we're here. Uh, Because obviously the biologically unfit want representation. So you can kind of make some parallels (laughs) along the way. We have have a, a special occasion as my mom has texted me today oh, and whatever my mom texts hey, mom. me texts me i always try to stop down and let everybody know uh she just simply re- she just simply texted and just said smart ladies there you go Aww. <laughs> i'm uh, uh, still waiting for my email it's cool <laughs> big blue mina miku says after after seeing a picture of irena today i think uh i think the talk should be menopausal not men- not menstrual <laughs> oh. easy <laughs> easy <laughs> Savage. <laughs> uh, Tomah came in and says, my vote for best remake goes to the Wild Arms remake. It's on PlayStation 2. Thanks, Tomah. Appreciate that with the $10 super chat. All right, let's continue on. We got, we got a lot to talk about. We still have we have three really big things to talk about. Um, but first, let's talk about you, Melanie. Okay. Um, you, you were caught in the crosshairs of Kotaku over the last... Out of- that's yeah. what's so funny i was kind of minding my own business about this stuff like i covered the sweet baby ink stuff a little bit but with the kotaku it was like i got busy with other things i didn't even cover it and then all of a sudden i'm on friday night tights and i'm seeing people in chat go the kotaku lady she's going after melanie mac she's going after melanie mac she's gonna write a hit piece on melanie mac and i looked it up <laughs> I was like, what is going on? And how did I get mixed up in the middle of all of this? <laughs> well, so just a quick recap. Uh, would you like to recap everybody? Yeah. So basically, um, this editor at Kotaku, she's had beef with me for a while. I made a tweet about uh, Kotaku had this article I mean, on my channel, I've talked about stupid Kotaku articles before because, I mean, there are a plethora of them. But there was one specifically that tried to uh, bring this misogynist angle in gaming and talk about Gamergate and all this stuff again out of nowhere um, back in November. So I just made a quote tweet from the Kotaku tweet headline of it. And I just said, Kotaku is gay. Uh, And so she, on her personal account, which I'm just like, who are you? I had no idea who she even was, but apparently she wrote that article. She quote tweeted me and was like, uh, once again, I would like to challenge Melanie Mack to create or clash or, or whatever it's called, which is a boxing match. Right. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, that's weird that this woman just resorts to, I want to fight you, but whatever. I just didn't take it serious. Um, and so that, yeah, the, the beef goes at least from there, maybe even before. And I just didn't see it because I mean, she never has been relevant. So anyway, um, now all this is going on, which She doesn't tag me. She doesn't use my name, but people obviously know who it it is whenever she asked. Yes, this is when she first creator clash. That was it. Um, That was when she first challenged me to a fight in November. So then she did. She made a tweet saying, oh, this prominent twitch streamer female streamer who leans heavily into christianity and homophobia right there um anybody who has known her before her meteoric rise to fame let me know i want to talk to you so basically she's planning a hit piece and she's trying to shape this narrative that oh i was a nobody And then all of a sudden I decided to lean into Christianity and homophobia and that skyrocketed me into popularity. Um, So anyway, because she didn't actually tag me and she was trying to find people who obviously don't like me to say no telling what rumors or hate that they turn around and make up and fabricate for this. 
I made my tweet and I said, you know, you could always just talk to me if you want, but it looks like you'd rather find people who don't like me to help you formulate some hate and lies to fit a narrative you've inevitably made up in your head for your witch hunt. And then that's when she responded basically saying, oh yeah, my emails and my bio, I was going to reach out, but it's end of day for me, blah, blah, blah. Which, by the way. It is, I'm sorry. That's just the biggest line of horse shit I've ever heard in my it life. It is. Right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so I was I was gonna reach out to you, but and it you makes know. no sense. She had time to make that tweet. And if you're going to write an article about somebody, shouldn't your first line of action be to reach out to that person to talk to? Not, hey, let me make this obscure tweet where I don't use her name so she can't hopefully can't find it, but I need to signal to Everybody who knows her that doesn't like her so that we can get some tea on this situation. That's obviously the intent there. So I told her, I was like, okay, well, judging by your tweet and lack of tagging me, your intentions appear to be in bad faith, but I sent an email, happy to chat. And originally I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and chat with her. Um, so she got back with me at that time and was like, okay, well, um, I'll get in touch with you after the weekend and let you know what my schedule is like. And, uh, and she's like, we can do a, a phone call or a video call. And I was like, okay, yeah, a video call would be great because I thought, okay, I want, I think that would be the best way to, to have a discussion. So, um, and the, the more transparency on it, the better, right? Cause exactly. Cause you're right. In a situation like this, they want to twist everything as, as yeah. much as they possibly can to fit a narrative that they've already devised. Um, you know, right. but that, I think that's probably one of the biggest issues here is a journalist, they have a story, but as they gather facts about that story, they they have the op they have to report that story. It, mm -hmm. Well, I say in an idealistic setting, they report the story um in a straight and narrow manner, right? Um yeah. and I, I, there's zero percent chance that she was going to do this, given her track record. Exactly, yeah. and she already out the gate started things with an with a narrative that she made up, and she was looking to support that narrative that she made up. That's what's clear with her intentions. It wasn't let's have a discussion. Let me see, let me learn about you. Let me learn about your career and your story. It wasn't any of that. It was hey, I, I think Melanie Mac just talks about all of the stuff she does in counterculture because that's what got her famous. Let's let's form this piece to to support that claim instead of actually learning about the story. So then over the weekend, uh, uh you know, uh Grums made a tweet about everything. It went viral and a bunch of YouTube channels started covering it and then I see her on Twitter just like eating it up. Obviously, it's like, okay, she's itched, and then and then she starts tweeting about Asmund Gold, all this stuff. And it's like, okay, right. clearly she is wanting clout from YouTubers, content creators. And even if it's negative attention, she that's what she wants, and she is eating it up. She changed her profile picture to her face with like demon horns on it because that was one of the thumbnails that somebody made. Um, so then I started like seeing how she's just laughing about it. She's loving all the attention because let's face it. Nobody knew who she was before, not until she really started talking about other people. She was a nobody. And so it was like, uh, I was thinking, all right, but people were giving me advice already behind the scenes and saying, she's just going to try to twist everything you say. I just don't think it's a good idea for you to talk to her. She doesn't want to have an actual conversation. She just wants clout and she just wants to try to devise this thing. So then, um, uh, when she did reach out uh, later on Monday, yesterday, and she was saying she, okay, let's, let's schedule a time sometime uh, after next week to chat. Uh, then I got back with her and I told her no, which I made a tweet showing this because I wanted to be fully transparent about everything because I, if she wants to twist my words, she can't now. So, uh, <laughs> because it's out there. I said, judging by you blocking, because yeah, she did, she blocked me yesterday. Um, so that also shows that her intentions to have a genuine conversation weren't there if she's going to block me on Twitter when I didn't even talk to her on Twitter there. 
Um, right. she said, I said, judging by you blocked me on Twitter and your past and current tweets about me, I don't think your intentions are in good faith and I will pass on talking with you. But since you have implied that I saw a meteoric rise to fame from my counterculture views, I'd like to correct your misinformation. I had a thriving career for over a decade hosting events around the world and online with companies such as Ubisoft, Riot Games, EA, Walmart Game Center, Razor, GameStop TV, Facebook Gaming, and many more, as well as on television with Disney XD, not to mention countless big sponsorships over the years, ranging from the U.S. Marines to Hyundai, PUBG Mobile, and many more than I have time to list. I knew that my freedom of speech and views outside of the approved narrative would cost me working in the industry again and would cause me to lose my sponsorships, but it was a price I was willing to pay. I reached a point where I found my freedom to be more important than my career. The only following that really grew beyond my previous growth rate was Twitter, and even then only after Elon Musk bought it. I was speaking out before that, and Twitter does not bring me any significant revenue. I do not make more money now than I did before, and I never thought that I would. I just value my freedom. All of this information is easily fact-checked by my work history. So if you are trying to run with a narrative that I grew to popularity through reactionary views, you would simply be incorrect. Best wishes to you. Now, so. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you laid it out there perfectly for her, right? And mm -hmm. as you said, it's all, it's all fact-checkable. You can go in and, and yes. find all this data herself, which... She wouldn't because she's not a journalist. She's not. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you responded You responded to her pretty much just saying, yeah, you know, and, and the idea, once again, this stems from she blocked you. Why would she block you? I know. She wants to do a story on you, yet she blocks you? Exactly. That, make any sense. that shows that a lot of where her intentions really lie in this situation. So she replied this morning and she said, hi, Melanie, that's a shame. I was hoping you'd want a chance to share your views and have a face-to-face -face conversation instead of tweeting slurs or either of us throwing barbs on social media. My inbox is always open if you change your mind. Good luck, best. What a <laughs> narcissism. I know, wow. first of all, changing this to, I just wanted a face-to-face -face discussion. No, you didn't. First of all, you didn't even reach out to me to ask for that. You were trying to get people who didn't like me to try to feed your narrative you already made up before even doing any research. Um, so I replied and I said, I'm afraid you already threw barbs yourself and showed your lack of good intentions when you asked to fight me, as well as when you... <laughs> <laughs> as well as when you incited for gossip about me and didn't have the integrity to reach out to me for a discussion in the first place. Your actions have already spoken loud and clear. You also refused to have a moderated discussion on Side Scrollers podcast prior. So again, I find your claims of wanting a face-to-face -face conversation to share views less than believable. Take care. And she replied and again. Oh, oh, we got more. <laughs> All right. So and she, now, let's go. she said, Melanie, I'm sorry you feel that way. I was merely suggesting we take part in a charity event together. I thought <laughs> someone who clear <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone who gleefully tweets slurs would be more than willing to have a conversation, but I see that I was mistaken. Again, if you change your mind. My inbox is open. Have a lovely day. <laughs> what a, I'm going to say this really loud. And I know my mom's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but what a dumb cunt. <laughs> God. See, um, now do you agree with, with that video I sent to her yesterday with the smelly fishy thing? <laughs> Let me just say this. People don't know this, but behind the scenes, uh, uh, my thought is that if if this was going to happen, if she was going to have an interview with you, it needs right. to be a two way street, and it needs to be live. Yep, it needs to mm -hmm. be live to where nothing can be edited, people can see it. Um, and that's there's zero. That, did you suggest that at all in in uh, when when speaking to her at all, or was that was that uh, no? That, that was already. I mean, 
you reached out to her about side scrollers. And by the yep. time I was coordinating again, I was like, you know, cause I did think about bringing that up again, but I was like, Hey, I, I already know her intentions are bad. And then her replies only further validated that. Um, it's, it's just gaslighting my common sense and gaslighting the situation as a whole and acting like, Oh, what are you talking about? I was just inviting you to a charity event. Gaslighting victims. Yeah, when she literally was asking to to fight me. It was it's a boxing match. Be real. Let's not pretend we're not stupid here. Let's not pretend that you weren't saying you wanted to 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 box with me and to fight me because you didn't like what I had to say. Um now, that's what it was there's all a about. Thing too, to, to add to that, because her tweet language says, once again, I'm inviting. So not yes. only has she, she done it once, but she's done it prior. If her concern was charity, where are the tweets stating, hey, this organization is doing a charity event. How would you like to be part of it? We're crocheting yep. for cripples. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> no, I <I'm not laughs> to box with you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> for cripples. Let's go, Let's I go. need that charity to be a thing. Crocheting for cripples. I would love that. <laughs> no, okay. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We crochet for cripples, but we're gonna get funded by DHS because we're gonna say that we're fighting extremism and terrorist recruitment by crocheting for the cripples to show them that the community is good. I <laughs> Seven hundred thousand dollars right here. Wow. I'll write it up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm just this. I'm glad that I showed everything that I wrote and put that out there on Twitter be before she puts her article out because now mm -hmm. that puts her in a spot where she's already trying to twist the narrative and just these replies here. And I, she, yeah, now, okay, go ahead and try to twist my words. Everybody already has them and more people saw my tweet than will ever see your stupid Kotaku article that nobody watches and looks at. I think you handle this really, really well, Melanie. I've, uh, seen a lot of the tweets too and i made some responses too on twitter with all this um i i wonder if she is going to do the article at all i i wonder if her mm -hmm. was just to intimidate the whole game right. world and just show like this is you know just to kind of flex and show that like you too could be the next melanie we could come after you too because that's what always people keep doing they are just oh. trying to appeal to everyone's fear this whole industry you know and so it's just trying to shut people up so maybe she's not, maybe she never had any intention of doing a hit article on you, but Hey, if you're associated at all with Melanie Mack, then, you know, you must be an extremist. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And you I know, appreciate your support too. You've just been amazing. I, I welcome the hit piece. Um, Alyssa, come and get it. You know, if you want to come after side scrollers, go ahead. You know, I, I would love that. That'd be great. Uh, please put some shine on us. You know, anything <laughs> you about us will ultimately look great. I Can promise. I share that 22 second video I shared yesterday? Because Melanie hasn't seen it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, right, we'll, so we'll I talked to now. Alyssa yesterday. Well, actually, she she ta she uh, told me to go away, so I told her no, and I shared this video to her, and I think it really applies to Alyssa because she's such a smelly bitch. If it isn't fresh, <laughs> I'm out of business. Isn't that sweet, you little money maker? You <laughs> use new sweet fish every day. Keep that skunky cunt away. Use new sweet fish every day. Keep that skunky cunt away. <laughs> Amazing! Wow! Amazing! <laughs> wow! Well, that's the thing. Is all of this that's going on right now, and now she's going after Asmund Gold, and he even said like, uh. Why didn't you just DM me? Oh, why didn't you try to reach out to me? Because she's again right. asking people, does anyone know this about Asmin Gold? Anyone know that? So she's just now she's focusing on him. She's going to try to focus on someone else later. Let's be real. This is the most attention she has ever received in the history of her life. And mm -hmm. Kotaku is, is about to fade out into nothingness. And so will she with it. She's She didn't have anything before and she won't after it's just the reality of the situation not that i wish for her to fail in her life it's not that but let's be real she's clout chasing and mm -hmm. that's these what people all this is about. these kind of people hate people like you melanie because 
you know, you, you talk so much about religion and being a Christian as well as other religions too, focuses so much on hope and goodness. Right. And like, that is your, that's probably your number one driver in your actions. Most people, their number one driver is fear or people like her, not, I won't say most people, but people like her. And so she's trying to appeal to everybody else who's mm -hmm. scared and empty and have people come after you. And I, I really like, I really see that for what it is. When I responded to your, to that tweet for you earlier, I was talking about how, um, first time, just how people can't understand sometimes when you speak out against things as a Christian, that's not hate, you know, you're, yeah. you're showing disapproval. And that's something that you understand a lot when you become a parent, because I love my kids unconditionally, but I can also simultaneously say like, this is not right. And you're, mm -hmm. and you're telling this for their good. Right. So you understand. Most people can understand that concept better once they become a parent. A lot of people can understand it before that. Some people still become parents and still can't understand that concept. But it's like, I think she's a lot smarter than that. I don't think she actually thinks that you're a really hateful person. Right. I think that she is trying to influence the culture right now. She's trying mm -hmm. to scare people. And she's an empty human being. And she's attacking you because you're the antithesis of what she is. Um, and I find that pretty despicable. Thank but you. yeah. Thank you. I think that you, you all are pretty right on as far as she is cloud chasing for sure. And I think she sees the writing. On, number one, I, I'm amazed that she has time to write these articles when she should be creating guides for Kotaku. I That's can really help her with any Tomb Raider guides she needs to write. I'm here. My inbox is open. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be, God, that'd be phenomenal. What a great guy that would be. <laughs> Alyssa and Melanie getting together for a Tomb Raider guy. Uh, you, know, you wonder if she is. And by the way, I will I will donate five hundred dollars to Alyssa's to Alyssa's favorite charity if. She comes on and does a guide, a walkthrough guide, a live walkthrough guide with Melanie Mack and Alyssa doing a two minute guide. <laughs> um, no, but uh, you wonder if she is trying to gather clout. And because she sees the writing on the wall with her career, with her writing career, because she clearly doesn't want to write guides. She has, what, two weeks to try to turn it around, try to get something going on Kotaku before, they, before they're like, yeah, that was a bad idea. I'm sorry we gave you two weeks to continue to write news. You wonder if she's trying to gather clout to gain followers to ultimately in time reopen that reopen that uh that only fans you know uh and that's the idea is she's looking long term here i only have a certain amount of time let's just get as many eyes as i possibly can here and then come in and try to monetize monetize my boobies i guess or my butthole you know i don't know you need an eel for that Need a deal for that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Blabs. Love it. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll kind of see what happens from this. Hopefully, nothing. Uh, we'll, 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 when we have you on, yeah, that's true. You're right. Give her nothing. I will not give her anything. You're right, hundred um, <laughs> percent. But I guess we'll see when, when, or if that hit piece does come. What she has to say. And you know what? I should reach out to her because Melanie, I've known you. You know, uh, back in the day when you were doing all those, all those right. things, I, I met you a long time ago, yeah. you know, and, uh, so I, I've seen, seen, uh, your entire career take place. So I'd be a perfect place to per perfect person to talk to about. And by the way, even if you ha were making more money right now, Melanie, than you were before, that's nothing to be ashamed of too. And that's what, that's just one of these little playbooks that these people like mm -hmm. to follow when they're little plays they like to follow. It's, it's to try and almost guilt you. Like you're not, it's not, if you're any money you're earning now is not from grifting. You're being yourself and you're speaking right. your truth. And there, that's nothing to be ashamed of either. That, I, that really bothered me a lot that she tried to shame you for that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's just like, uh, it, it, it's jarring <laughs> whenever it's like so far from the truth where it's like, I gave up my my career it's like i'm still in the same space in the terms of okay i'm making content i'm doing the content creation side but i i uh, that was a hard decision that was it, a really hard was. decision you had to make and it's a hard decision that all of us probably here yeah. on the panel have had to make and so we know how precious that is yep. that's our integrity we have integrity and that is a value that a lot of these people especially her do not have they don't even know what that's like they right. don't even know what it's like. And because they will sell their, their, uh, their soul in a, in a second, no problem, That's true. you know? And mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of courage and bravery. We all see it. 
I think most of people on social media that don't even know you, if they've read those tweets, I think they see it too. Thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. People like her, they don't they don't know what it is to sacrifice and they don't know what it is to create or fight for something that you actually believe in. Because mm-hmm. if you look at the way that she's changed over time and the amount of hate that she has in her heart, I mean, who who does what she's doing right now outside of some 16 year old child? Yeah. These aren't the actions of a grown woman who loves These are the actions of a sad and empty individual who knows that they're backed up against a corner. They know that they can't flip sides because then everyone around them will leave them. I mean, Brianna Wu is a great example of that. She's on that transphobic list and she's gone to bat for them. She was Gamergate one. Yeah. Right. Right. And they turned on her because she she had one misstep. So Alyssa knows that if she has one misstep, she's screwed. They always She's align their herself own. with crazy. They do, they do. and they're doing that now. Mm-hmm. The glad thing. I don't know if you saw the 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 new hateful word. You can't say homosexual. Apparently. Yep. What? Yep. Yeah. Now homosexual is offensive. So it's like, okay, I I want to be left alone for me saying the the bundle of sticks word because they're gonna keep changing things. It's yeah. like we well, yeah, well, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now homosexual is no hom- offensive. And and the word cis no longer has meaning according to the 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 popular trans person over in in the UK that's always attacking J.K. Rowling. They said my transition oh, is complete. I'm now a yeah. I'm now a cis woman. And Little and it's like okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys you guys gave us the label cis to say that we were born as women, but now <laughs> one of your most prominent talking pieces is claiming to be a cis woman. Yeah. So you can't even keep up your own. And so just like with with all of that, because it's all it's all connected. Alyssa knows she's screwed. All she can do is destroy. She's backed up against a wall. We can't see the the analytics, but because of the changes Kotaku's making, obviously things are not good. Mm -hmm. And what skills does she have otherwise? She's literally admitted, I have no skills but my body. Yep. Go go start your own podcast, Alyssa. Go Mm. create something new. You don't have to take it up the ass from an eel. (laughs) You don't. (laughs) Come crochet with me. We can learn. Yes. Wow. Let's play games, Alyssa. Be happy again. You were once happy. I see your smile in a picture and I'm sad for you. Like, I I actually am. Mm -hmm. There there, there was that one picture that was posted. And she genuinely looked happier then than she does now. Yep. Oh, I don't know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is an awesome show. God, I love this show. <laughs> crochet with me. <laughs> I don't know how to crochet. You'll have to read this off, please, as Big Blue Mina Muku came in with the 50 European monies. That's uh, British pounds there, Craig. That's all right. <laughs> Her article was spiraled deeper than an ocean gate submersible. Ooh, hello, Titan. If you're going to come after a popular member of the fellowship, don't be surprised if the entire fellowship responds like the Rohirrim. I believe that's how you pronounce them. Watch Lord of the Ring, Craig. Yeah, Craig. Yeah, I, Craig. Know. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Big Blue. Greatly appreciate that. that is uh, massive. M2M says, Modern Marvel plus DC sucks. There are better iconic women in the JRPG Live A Live. Live A Live? Uh, Live a it. tough Chinese Chinese martial artist, a cute cave girl, a seductive witch, a spunky cow girl, sexy bunny girls, hyping up Hulk Hogan. This game has it all. <laughs> Thank you so much, M2M. Appreciate that. And uh, T Down Under says, love you guys. Also, thanks for getting Razor back on last week. Yeah, man, that was awesome having Razor back. And we'll, he'll be back uh, more frequently once uh, Ghost has been released. Uh, Vash came in and says that journalist only had only Frog's account that was closed, probably uh, probably for not enough revenue. Now Kotaku chose to go back to making guides since news isn't financially viable, so her job is at risk. Thank you, Vash. Appreciate that. And Kongzilla also gifted 10 Yay! membership to the channel. Holy crap. Uh, Kongzilla, thank you so much. You guys have been spectacular today. Apparently, mm-hmm. you like smart Attractive, wonderful, intelligent women. So side scroll her is coming soon, which is great. I <laughs> appreciate that. That is spectacular. If you guys got a gifted membership, make sure you say a thank you and consider paying it forward. Blabs, we read off a couple super chats while I put this on the wall. And then we gotta get in, we gotta get into this final purge stuff that's been going on. We haven't even like we, we've gone for an hour, almost an hour and a half. We haven't even got into the like the meat and potatoes. And of the we gotta so do the dis- disdain gaming today. 
Yes. Oh, we, we didn't got there yet. How no. <laughs> um, Seaman Nader for K2. Mel should turn into a mecha and fight the woke. <laughs> Uh, M Mongo the Hungry, uh, based on AFC Championship, Baltimore is used to collapse. <gasps> this well, is true. <laughs> no, I'm a Steelers up. fan, so I approve of the humor. This, this, is, this is sports. Yeah, yeah sports. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Lutz says, why do I always want to say woo after someone says ducktails? <laughs> 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 Thanks, 60 Watt. Appreciate that. All right, let's go, let's go on to our oh, next Oh, wait, we got to read this one. Hang on. I'm a furry little daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust game devs who can't bi pass biology 101. Mm. You know, I will say this. If we were just to remove all game developers that had pronouns in their bio, uh, mm -hmm. I think that I think the, the nature would heal. Yeah. I think there would be a big part of that for sure. So um, speaking of um, pronouns in bio, Let's go to our lead story today as this is just bat shit insane. <laughs> like if I can just be very honest with you, uh, thanks to bounding into comics for, uh, for this right here. Uh, they came out with this is BBC gaming presenter, Julie Hardy, Jules Hardy calls for current sweet baby Inc. Uh, discourse to end with a quote, final purge of ideological opponents from the medium. Now, that is uh, absolutely horrific, to say the least. Uh, and this is where it comes from. This is from a tweet from Black Girl Gamers, who, if you recall, um, we actually are familiar with. I, I believe this is the same lady, uh, if, if I do yeah. say so correct. Uh, if I do say so, this Welcome, is... Welcome, fellow gamers. <laughs> there she is. Uh, Trinidad Black uh, says, and we'll kind of go to the origin of this here. Um so they they were talking about how they never never worked for Sweet Baby Inc. And you saw Black and Consulting and, and uh, decided to put them all together. Sounds like racism. Oh, they're very quickly. Uh, we're, we're not stopping having fun. And then she responded with, can we, uh, I guess, can we all agree that for round two of quote unquote this, it can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers? It's 2024. And I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have uh, can we have a last full detox of these dudes of these dude, so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating? Cringe. <laughs> I would like to know what she's been arguing for decades because when I was on the original Xbox Live with the original Xbox, I was welcomed with open arms. If somebody was making fun of me, they were wait making fun of their best friend too. And mm -hmm. I felt so whole every time I played Halo or Call of Duty or anything else online. Yep. There and they're rewriting history. No, yeah, there has been no four decades. Her own people acknowledge that. That's why we have government funding all of a sudden trying to find the extremism, trying to find the hate, because it doesn't exist. Yep. There are mentally unwell people, sure, and we should focus on them 100%. But this bullshit, this is how you know this individual is a tourist. Yep. Well, what? <laughs> it, it's about taking over is what it really is. They, it, it, These are people who we're mostly a bunch of non-gamers and who don't appreciate video games for what they are and uh they want to take the culture they want to remove the culture they want to they want to make the games all babied down and easier they want to make the communities all softer you know you can't have your fun banter and smack talk anymore all games have to be accessible for every single person you have to have uh, yellow paint that tells you where to go and shiny ledges and the character that tells you what to do. Uh, gaming is, is they want to change it all. And, and this I ratioed her about it. You ratioed her extremely <laughs> hard. Like, <laughs> quite the ratio there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, she came back and says, no, I want to purge the hate and vitriol from gamers who refuse to allow gaming to evolve and adapt as we humans are doing. Uh, I have no problem with opposing viewpoints, but hate, uh, violence, and aggression and aggressive behavior isn't okay in any realm you live in. As the lady just called for a final purge. Yes, Grom <laughs> ratioed her good from that too. From that mm -hmm. reply, if you click on it, 
Grums, Grums always said, oh, he said, you said final purge. <laughs> you taught us, you, uh, you taught us to take everything literally, but you, you told us bloodbath meant an actual <laughs> bloodbath. And for years you told us context doesn't matter. Why should we change the standards you set when you, well, yeah. when you feel, oh my goodness. Wow. That's just insane. Some other great uh, responses here. Clifton Duncan. What a stud over here. Um, I David love Clifton. You know, <laughs> can I just say really briefly, yeah. rare, for a very short amount of time, I had a podcast on Twitch where I was talking about more controversial stuff. And he was one of my guests and he was freaking amazing. And uh, I just can't say enough good things about him. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. Nice. Well, no, Clip, uh, Clifton came in and says the gaming community was positive until, quote, progressives came along and decided to, quote, fix it, which, God, did he nail it right there? It's insane. Mm -hmm. and, and Savvy, you are very analytical in your approach, which I appreciate. You know, you said, well, I'll, I'll let you read that because I think you nailed this here. Uh, what specifically have you been arguing about for decades? And what have you created, not co-opted, but created other than hateful rhetoric and calling for a purge? Yes. Now, I had another, another response that was a little bit more detailed. And I ended up deleting it because... I do try to walk a very fine line where I just ask questions because I'd rather someone try to explain themselves because usually if somebody does respond, it takes about one tweet to dismantle them. Um, <laughs> but also, you, I, I cannot understand her feelings without questions. That is the basis mm -hmm. of communication. This is what sets us apart from other animals. And so when they don't want to have a dialogue and they just want to shout at you, that's how you know that this person is not serious and an actual adult. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing that I had before was I explained that, you know, hey, the, the EGRN even contradicts you here because they don't have any of this. There's nothing that backs up your claims. And yeah, it's we'll get, poignant. So. Yeah, we'll definitely get into the EGRN thing in just a little bit uh, because there's a lot there. I mean, if you guys... I, I look around in the gaming space and I'm like, how did we get here? How did we get to this this level of insanity specifically in the last month? Like this is this is crazy. And the fact that like I, I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of of doing our show every day and just pointing and laughing at just the absolute insanity because side scroll is in its origins. And Desiree, I remember talking to you about this, but the the idea of this was just looking at the gaming space, going like, holy shit, this place is insane. And and being an outlet for regular people. Because here's the reality is that this industry is run by head cases, by mentally fucked up people. And you have to just let people know who are playing these games that this is not normal. These are not normal people. These are people in a bubble. And this is a great example of it. It's like she is she is in such a bubble. Uh, when you look at her tweets, there, you know, she's she's a city dweller. She is obviously, you know, when you look at her her uh, her pin tweet, this this Jules person, you know, almost almost like right on time, man, almost right on time. Her pin tweet, perfect for 2022 after the lockdown. She comes out as non-binary. Well, of course <laughs> she did. <laughs> Well, of course she did, because, you know, that was the thing at the time. And here we and are. Non-binary is the most safe thing for, for any of these people to have to come out as, because first of all, it's fake and it's not real. And secondly, they don't have to do anything. They don't have, it's a, they have to change absolutely nothing, but just say, oh, by the way, I'm non-binary. <laughs> so um, we have not had, uh, La she said it's Rihanna, correct, Blabs? Is that right? La Rihanna? Lorena. Lorena. Okay. We have not had Lorena. She's Lorena. amazing. You definitely need her on. Mm -hmm. I love her. She's so oh, sweet. Yeah. I, I've seen her before. I would, yeah, we'd love to have her on. So, yeah. There already was a quote positive gaming community until Heffa's like you rolled in, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looked down your noses at us and decided everything we loved in gaming was either toxic or racist or ableist or whatever the is does of the day. Plus ignoring my plus ignoring minorities who disagree with your nonsense, which I like just to point out that Lorena is uh, is black, just happens to be black. Mm -hmm. So um, it's amazing to see. Like it always comes back. It just always it always comes back to white women, fucking white women, man. It's 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 like mm -hmm. white women who who want to have savior complex, and that's really what it comes down to. Um. 
And I thought this was a really interesting, you know, obviously I I've, I've been over the last week talking about how we need to take games back. And I think she is a perfect case study of this as uh, when you look at her, at her uh, timeline, it has uh, wonderful things like this, her appearing at the game awards with her crazy piercing through her septum and her stuff. And sure enough, here she is with a red carpet award, right? These are, once again, these are the people who are deciding the quote unquote best games of the year. This yeah. is the issue. Here she is at the British Academy of Video Games Award. Once again, these are the people who are making decisions based off you. And that's fucked up. That is why take games back is important. Anyways, just I just think it's really dumb as shit. So um yeah. Do you ladies have anything else on this before we uh move on? It okay. hurts. <laughs> what, what do we do like i guess that's the question what do we do with it with a dumbass like this because like at the i end of the think day, we're you're... doing the right thing right now gamers are rising up you 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 ratio them that's what you gotta do and i think for the longest time a lot of us just try playing nice because we're constantly being called bigots we're called mean this that or the other and it has kept us in submission to them for entirely too long and we're sick of it now because are they nice no they are ruthless. They want to ruin your life if you have any disagreements with them. So it's like, hey, if they're not going to play nice, why do we have to be all submissive about everything? It's time to ratio these fools. Kick them ratio. out of the like kick them out of the space if they can't play with us. If they're not going to get along with us and they want to kick us out of the space, no, we were here first. I totally agree with Melanie. I think like this is a special time right now in gaming history. Yeah. And this is the time for people to start making noise. And I know it's really scary. Um, but this you just got to do we just got to do it. You just got to put yourself mm -hmm. out there. Um, there is such a thing as a uh, such thing as righteous indignation, right? And yeah. like, we have we have to, we have to, um, like save our art, honestly, because the art is suffering too. Like not only is our community suffering, but like art is suffering. And that is, I mean, really, I know you've had um, so many people talk about Marxism on here too, but that, that this really is the path that we are on. And it's, this is, this is really important, not just in gaming, but it's important in society as a whole. So, you know, I know people are not, everyone's in the kind of position where we are, um, where we can talk about these things and not have to worry about losing our jobs. Uh, but I think we already we'll, lost them. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're already blacklisted. <laughs> yeah. <all> right. <laughs> so, you know, here. <laughs> and I'm not going to like tell what somebody should do in their individual situation. Cause I know it can be really complicated, but you've got to find your way right now to, to, to make a difference here. Um, so I just think people need to have more courage and just, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I think what we're Mal saying would be proud of these people. I'm sorry. What's right? that? Mal. He's the one who 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 kind of forged um in in old China that that whole right, right. us versus them rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I think that's what we're seeing in a situation like this where you have um you know people like Jules Hardy and you see people like uh, Alyssa McCarthy, um who are for the first time in their life, like specifically especially in the last few years, they're seeing pushback. They're seeing mm -hmm. pushback and they don't know how to handle it. So they immediately just start throwing out ist, phobe, race, blah, 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 blah. And that's that's their last gasp. And at the end of the day, we're going, nah, fuck you. It ain't good enough anymore. Like mm -hmm. you're right, Melanie. People, people held back and they were trying to play yep. nice for so long, but the gloves mm -hmm. are fucking off. Yep. Like they're off. And if you ain't in with it, man, it's hey, it's going down. It's going down. You're either with us or against us, you know. Um, and there's way more who are with us at this mm -hmm. point, for sure. And I genuinely believe, too, just making them explain themselves is yep. the best possible thing any average person can do. Just pick a part of their tweet and say, hey, can you explain this further? And if they don't respond and there's tons of people asking that question, it's telling. Yep. Ask awesome. respectful questions and they're gone. That's it. That's all and, you got to do. Yeah, because a lot of times they'll just jump to personal attacks because they can't explain themselves. I have people all the time that complain about things that I say. And instead of 
having anything, any argument against it. They bring up that I got dehydrated before. It's so unrelated. It's like, yeah, well, a, a little over a year ago, I got dehydrated and I went to the ER for dehydration. And it's like, I'll talk about it. Oh, this is ridiculous. You're like how you're inserting all this ideology into gaming. And their reply is a screenshot of me at the ER. Oh, you went to the ER for being dehydrated. <laughs> okay. What is, what is gotcha. that? Why would they do that though? Because yeah. that's terrible. I know. It's like they, they don't have any argument. But the, their entire ideology and all of that is so ridiculous. They can't defend it. So it's like, oh, okay, let me just throw it in your face that you went to the ER, ER for dehydration before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fucking insane. Oh my Says the person who gets triggered from a fucking alarm clock, probably, and doesn't have a fucking nine to five. Oh, At least we can make a phone weird. call, but we're going to make fun of somebody who was dehydrated. Yep. Awesome. Hey, hey, uh, being on time savvy is racist. <laughs> Going to the gym. Drinking, <laughs> yeah, drinking coffee is racist. <laughs> A hey, T Down Under came in with 10 gifted memberships. Thank you so much, T Down Under. Greatly appreciate that, your support. If you guys got gifted membership, make sure you say uh, thank you and uh, consider paying it forward. Uh, that is spectacular. T Down Under, look at that. Look at that. Also, Johnny came in. I'm sorry, I said Sonny. Sonny came in Yay! with this with the 50 mm -hmm. European monies. If Vlad, go and read that off, please. It's British pounds. Hey, Dear Connie. Melanie Mack, you are our super earth. Like you, we fight for democracy in our games. The journalists are progressives. Are the automatons spewing the same stuff? We are hell divers. Are you doing your part to protect our super earth? <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing my best. And I, and I just had one of my friends ask me yesterday, why are you playing hell divers? Why? I, I, will, I, I, I promised I would look into it today. So. Dude, I can't play again. I, I tried to play it again yesterday and I can't get in. It's telling me my friends are offline. I can't oh, join no. anybody. It's the same. And it works every other day and it drives me insane. Thanks, Hellbivers. I want to be <laughs> part of your democracy. <laughs> All right. we uh, Guys, you have been incredibly generous today. And uh, we cannot tell you how much we genuinely appreciate that. We still have one more story to go. And this this actually may be one of the crazier stories. This may be the most important story of the day. Uh, and this comes from Savvy. Uh, I will get to every single Super Chat before the end of the show. Just know that uh, no matter when you when you send it, uh, every Rumble rant, every direct donation, because every single one of them matters. Uh, thank you again for your support. Uh, very much appreciate that. But so let's go over to you, Savvy, because you, you've you been doing some really good work over on X. And uh, I want you to talk about this, the extremism and gaming research network. What? the fuck is this oh boy where do i begin um so this whole thing started for me because on the take this website they occasionally state as from my three minute video that they are funded by dhs but they don't really expound on that except for one post from 2022 i think it was where they actually talk a little bit about it but other otherwise throughout their website they just sprinkle that they're funded by dhs to try to uplift their claims and their work so I ended up going really hard on this. I called DHS. I figured out how to look up all the grant stuff on there because I've never actually used DHS's system and it's really easy. And so for the longest time, I thought I was doing something wrong. Well, it turns out, Take This partnered up with Middlebury College and Logically AI to attempt to do research into extremist and gaming uh, or extremism and gaming, right? And through Dr. Colwert, I found the EGRN because she's a part of that. Now, the EGRN was founded, and I only recently found that information, but it was founded by RUSI, which is the Royal United Services Institute. And basically, they are a think tank that has been around for a really long time. And so they focus on defense, um, international news, things like that, like, like things that are important. Uh, not everything connected to this is bad, but people have joined these organizations to try to push their own agendas. So... Russi created the EGRN uh, along with Love Frankie, I think. It's not really clear. And it is a collection of people from various different organizations that have been studying uh, far-right extremism or gender studies 
or other forms of sociology that are all through a gender critical lens. And it is made up of, of people and organizations that strictly focus on that right wing extremism around the world. And they are connected to various organizations and governments, um, the ADL, and I have now officially tied them to the WEF through Russi. What they fail to mention at any point is how hyperconnected all of this is. So the way that government funding works, these people think that they're being propped up by the government. But in truth, the government just wants to be able to regulate and monitor as much as they can. DHS is literally known for throwing money at things that do not matter in the slightest. So when they submitted their their research uh, uh, their research grant request through the college, not only did that make it look more desirable to DHS, but they threw in all the buzzwords of extremism, of terrorist uh, uh, terrorist engagement, and things like that. But none of these people actually even like they they have no no work. The people who actually work for the EGRN, the people who have put out articles, I've read a lot of them. They acknowledge that there's nothing to support this claim, but when they submit the grants, they make it sound like an ongoing problem, which that right there is red flag number one to me. Mm. So these people are, uh, I believe, let me see where, uh, there's one of them that I do a, a pretty good breakdown of the salaries. I think it was for somebody else who's connected to take this. I've written about so many of them, so I get them jumbled. But basically, uh, the head guy is paying himself $60,000 from a $700,000 grant um, mm -hmm. each year for two years. So he's getting a total of 120 something thousand dollars, right? And so they are, they are uh, oh, oh, that's NASEF, N-A-S-E-F. Um, they are an esports organization through the government. Um, <laughs> or not through the government. They're a scholastics esports thing, and they basically try to get people into esports as a career, right? So they talk to middle schoolers and high schoolers. But this guy, in their grant submission, the funding, this is how you know it's all a grift. They only want to separate out $20,000 for scholarships and to actually give to the students over two years. But he's going to pay himself $60,000 a year. Wow. On top of the salary he receives, on top of the other work that he does. Wow. So that's what these people are doing. They're okay. getting government grants. Now, I, I you, you detail a couple other companies here. Uh, this this mm -hmm. Love Frankie company. Um, who who is this? Who is this Love Frankie company? Why should so why are they? Love, Love Frankie is one of the institutional members. For, for the EGRN and the guy who I guess helped co-found co or co-convene, I don't know what a lot of these words kind of kind of mean in that in that regard because I think they're trying to be sneaky in the way that they do this. But their advisor is the same guy who is the co-convener, the I don't I really try to avoid names because I don't want to pronounce them because I'm really bad at it. Mm -hmm. But um, where's the picture of it? Because I'm I'm not going to be able to say it without reading it. Uh, that's good. But where's the Love Frankie one? Here it oh, is. I'm sorry. Uh, I did. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, so so it's the the co-convener Galen Lamphere England, and I'm so sorry that I butchered the name. I don't know <laughs> if it's right. But so he he is the the co-convener of of the EGRN, but he is also the Russi uh, employee. He works for Russi. He, he founded, basically, the EGRN, and he's listed as, as Love Frankie's Senior Strategic Communications Advisor. Mm. Okay. And then we this also have... This is a very busy the, man. He, absolutely. And then we have the Canadian Institute for Far-Right Studies. Uh, by the way, I, I googled Canadian Institute for Far-Right Studies to see if it existed, and it did. And then I googled Canadian Institute for Far-Left Studies, and wouldn't you know it? There wasn't one. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, how no, there, theirs is um really, really interesting. I think theirs was the one that had, if I go and look at that's the tech against terrorism one. Um they so they're the ones who kind of focused on on the the racism and violence on and offline, but they also talked a lot about the freedom convoy. And a lot of what they were saying was the same talking points that other leftist media would would say, and it doesn't look like they actually really reached out to any anybody from it. Um, 
Oh, here it is. Under research, they state that their focus is on white supremacy, eth- ethno-nationalism, male supremacy, religion, which they then say, which they state is often incorporated into far-right extremist doctrine as a justification of beliefs. So these are the so, uh, the people who are in charge of, of the the figuring out who are extremist in video games and specifically this is canada correct yeah yeah this is this is all for canada um they are a think tank and they do contribute in some manner to government and policy and they do have access to to canadian um policy makers so they, they so the policy makers right now obviously want to be able to control and silence the the, the right wing isms right. um and organizations like this whether it's true or not, the government is going to latch on to it because yeah. it just props up the government to be able to say, oh, these people claim to have found this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make a bunch of laws around it. It's not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Like they're, These people think that they are important and they're really not. The government is using them because the government just wants to control them. And at sure. some point, there's not going to be any, any more far right that they can explore. And they're going to come for the left. That's just what they do. Mm -hmm. By the way, I I think it's extremely interesting Mm -hmm. when you look at the about us of the Canadian Institute for Far Right Studies. As you scroll down, just see how many white women there are in comparison and, you know, just white people there are in comparison and not a whole lot of diversity here. Just (laughs) I'd like to point out as as the DEI representative here. Yes. Those are not white women's. They are she they's. They <laughs> them. <laughs> he them they's. Don't take it, How dare Sorry. you? I will, not, I will not live in their imaginary world. Uh, so what? what is, uh, like, could you see a situation in, where the extremism and gaming research network leverages the government to... I don't know, go after Mark the Cyborg, our favorite Canadian uh, autistic gamer <laughs> who, who may who may say something in a about frame rates that is not acceptable. And then all of a sudden he's in jail. Good. Is there is this so something that what what they are going to do? So so their their research is to ultimately prove to come back to the government, because the only way that they can keep getting funding, because they're obviously good. If, if Canada is going to give them $300,000 this year, imagine what they can get next year based off of their results. That's how that works. You get more funding if you bring them proved results. So they will take, say, segments of this YouTube podcast. They'll take segments of other YouTubers and say, hey, look, these, these, people are, these people are extremists. Look at this hateful rhetoric. They are going, like, this is my other favorite thing. They use self-reporting through Twitter and Google Forms to collect this information. So if some little snowflake says, I got called the F word on Call of Duty. That's extremist and terrorist recruitment. They're going to say, oh, that's one tick. This person experienced hateful rhetoric. That's a tick. They're not going to explain it. They're not going to expound on it. They're not going to go and detail it. They're not going to log it. They're just going to say, here's all the hate we found give us more money so that way we can keep doing this. So, yeah. And then because the government's going to say, okay, we need to make laws around this. And that's what they're already doing. There is a connection between this and the recent language of, um, I don't know if it was passed or proposed, but uh, basically Canada can jail you for your hate speech online, I guess now. Thank goodness I don't live in Canada. (laughs) I am unfortunately up there a lot. I'm half Canadian Uh and... uh, Look, driving on the QEW, just saying, <laughs> I could get arrested for the words of which I say. Wow. <laughs> I'm just I mean, kidding. Just, but... just the fact that there is an, ex- an extremism in gaming research network. You know, we, we've talked about this many times. You can manipulate data to say whatever you want it to say. Yeah. And you're yep. right with it, Savvy. You know, they're going to bring back all sorts of stuff. Well, maybe we'll get 500000 Maybe I'll pay myself $80,000 a year next year. As opposed to yep. uh, sixty, you know, or maybe maybe I'll just yeah. pump it up to a hundred, and maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll uh, allocate, you know, ten thousand dollars next year for for whatever it is that you know the actual reason for it. That's just yep. it's so corrupt, yep. so corrupt, and uh, I appreciate you shining a light on this nonsense. 
absolutely crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. And crazy. I'm sorry I'm a little scattered when I talk about it. It just really is a lot. That's why I have a, a schizo board. Uh, I actually need to make an updated video on it because I've added more to it. Wow. And Dr. Dr. Cohort is at the heart of a lot of this because she's even independently listed on the Russie website, which she fails to mention anywhere else so far that I've seen. Her own website words things very carefully because um, the language that they use is specific. They're, they're still trying to tout the line of look how important I am while also still not necessarily trying to be too obvious about what they're really doing. And this is this is just a fact of, of government spending and this kind of useless area of studies. In college, we make fun of people like that. Like nobody in science, in actual science, takes the gender study crew seriously. Right. Yeah. We all made fun of them, especially the poli sci people and the the gender studies, the critical critical feminist classes, all that stuff. We just we scoffed at it because it's not it's not legitimate. Um, if they really cared about societal issues, you would talk about it in totality and you would talk about the mental health of the people who do say hateful things, who take it too far, who who don't know the difference between reality and fiction. Um, the work started on the foundations, I believe, of something good, and it turned in to, to what an actual grift is. Because, mm -hmm. again, the government will literally fund the most useless stuff in the world if it means they get a chance to monitor somebody. Well, so. here we are. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. We're in the process of it, man. And once again, that's why it's so stupid that uh, a show like this has to exist and we have to point at all this stupidity and point it out to people because I guarantee the vast majority of the people here didn't necessarily know about the extreme, you know, this ridiculous idea of the extremism and gaming research network before tuning into Side Spillers today. So Savvy, thank you for your, your hard work and uh, finding that. Great Thousands stuff. of pages I've read. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even kidding at this point. I, I read all of the things these people write because I, I believe in being fair. That's what yeah. you know, my degree program taught me. And that's how you understand someone. You know, you, you have to look at you have to have a conversation with them to understand why they're doing this. So, you know, I hear you say you read a thousand pages of, of this stuff. And I just think. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> I love it. Job's I love done. It. All right. Um, awesome. Hey, uh, Blabs, will you read off some of these wonderful super chats real quick? Uh, actually, I want to hit the gaming thing before we hit super chats, if that's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, I, oh, oh, I worked oh, hard on it, Craig. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> gaming. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, guys. So did you guys know that March 26 in 2002, Star Wars Jedi Knight, the second one, Jedi Outcasts, came out? as well as Dragon Ball Z Supersonic Warriors in 2004. And then Far Cry 5 came out in 2018. Now there's a whole bunch of other games that have been released on this day back, you know, throughout the years, but these are the top three that stood out to me. So chat, let me know if you guys have played this game and if you're feeling super duper old today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Blab. This is usually at the start of the show and I messed it up. So that's my fault, Blab. Uh, <laughs> All right, Blabs, let's go read off some of these super chats. Yeah. So guys, thank you again for your support today. Uh, we'll get every single super chat, every single rumble rant, every single uh, direct donation. Uh, ladies, if at any time you need to split, I value your time and I appreciate it. Feel free to bounce at any time, but now is the time to give thanks to the community uh, for their wonderful support today. Okay. Blabs, fire away. All right, Marvel. I hope Craig feels pretty too. Do you feel Easy pretty? to feel pretty. <laughs> to right, buy so pretty. This estrogen. Haiku <laughs> says 12. Peck and Diddy would like to know your location. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't even get to the Diddy story today. No, that's tomorrow's topic, I guess. HP Lovecraft's cat. Kefals, the new model, look like Kefals. Kefals, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, is that Pokemon? <laughs> um, that Pokemon image they're saying, yeah, yeah that, that it looks like Kefals. It's it's a, that's a transgender person. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Yeah, much good for you, Kefels. Good for you. <laughs> you got your representation. <laughs> this you up. Putting boba and dumpy on anything is inherently sexualizing and objectification. Didn't you know? Yes. Bob's and Vagine. 
<laughs> all right, Red Strider. Hail Side Scrollers. Just bought my ticket to Vegas and can't wait to meet you all. Gamers will be here long after the tours are gone. We will win. Thank you. Red Strider, I'll see you there, buddy. Looking forward to seeing you. See man, when Saudi Arabia is more freer than US in 2024. Saudi Arabia <laughs> is buying esports. Do you guys know that? It's fascinating. What? Yeah. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um, Andrew Van Halen, ugly women are trying to make beautiful women disappear. True. Oh, yeah, no, I, and that that is true, but I think that uh again, like most of it is them trying to blur the gender lines. I think most of it is actually them trying to appease the the fake women, the, the men. He was so upset he actually ran away. Uh, <laughs> Mike who says double D, is that the support beam to the bridge? <laughs> Boobs. Uh Goosium, the laws of physics don't mess around. True. That thing snapped. Uh, Samster the hamster. Hi, Melanie. My buddy Red Foreman sims for you. Oh, thank you. Are you, you going <laughs> to kick him in the butt like Red Foreman style? I, I don't know if that was a joke or for real. I can't. No, I <laughs> <laughs> Super. The only viable way to enforce age restriction on social media would be forcing users to use their real identity. And that's probably even worse. Well, yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a tough thing because I do completely think that children shouldn't be on the Internet. So, yeah, I'm all for trying to prevent that from happening. But, it, yeah. Wild toe bag and see Craig, you're not even here, but look at that. As a parent, <laughs> my two teens, 15 and 16, are not on social media. We use the parenting apps to control phones. That is so based. Mm -hmm. I don't think that kids need on social media at all uh, until they're like 18 and they can do, do that on their own as adults. Yep. You remember but back in the day when you were lucky kids. That's true. Remember back in the day, like MySpace and Facebook, you had no yeah. way of like really venting and you'd be like, oh, I'm so mad at right now. Ah, oh, you don't even know why, but you know if you know, Sam. It's like, <laughs> what are these <laughs> kids doing now? <laughs> uh, death. Nanny states are not based, guys. Nanny states. I don't know what that means. That's that uh, mean, I think that's referring to DeSantis, which I, I, I will oh. say that I do. I It does always give me a little, mm, a bit of an ick to get the to go, to give the government more power so that this one is actually kind of a little bit of a the topic is a little yeah. iffy for me because you do want to be able to give the power to the parents to make those decisions um but the reality is that most people are most parents are not parenting that's like yeah. the really really sad reality so yeah. it's definitely a really tricky one like i'm really not I sure how i feel about it to be quite honest but i do understand i understand yeah. the fear there of not giving the government more power I, th I think the line that they use is really, really good, that they don't allow anyone under a certain age to enter in a contractual agreement. Mm -hmm, I think right. they went about that language the smartest because obviously companies are not regulating that. And so because right. the companies aren't regulating it, they have to come in and do that. So it makes sense. If they just straight up said, kids aren't allowed on the internet, that, that would definitely be, I think, the red flag for me. But because the language is specifically about the contract, I'm, I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Because then the parent has to make the the con the contractual agreement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, David, I, I agree with you. David says I'm instantly critical and suspicious when the government does anything for the children. Yes, yes. Mentioned. Kyle, doesn't Indian culture believe in reincarnate reincarnation? Perhaps the cargo men shouted for the to the falling cars. Thank you. Come again. That's awful. That's so awful. Oh my gosh. Moving on. Um, the Pally Dan. Look at this lovely episode of Side Scroll Hers. Mm -hmm. Cody, a lot of Indian truck truckers hit overpasses in BC, Canada. <laughs> 60 watt. YouTube censorship makes it impossible for me to send over half my quips and jokes. Looks over at Rumble. Mm hmm. Uh, Andrew, I can't touch grass right now because it's too cold, but I can certainly touch a treadmill. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. boy, Andrew. Get him. Thunder turtle. A Kotaku smells funny. Don't play with it. <laughs> <laughs> they need that can that I was saying. All right. <laughs> Yankee, a little over 100. Let's make gaming great again, y'all. Yeah, listen, you gaming is still great. You just got to find the right games that aren't full of shit. You extremist, them. you Yankee lover. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, did anyone spot Mothman in Baltimore this week? He likes bridges that won't be upright for long. Oh, huh? Lance, just relax. Just relax. 
I don't get it. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, Cesario, Gaming Rage EIC. We need info on Melanie Mack. Me. Melanie caused a Norwegian butter crisis of 2011. <laughs> $50 for one stick of butter. <laughs> it's not Melanie's fault. Yep. Kratos El Stratos, member for three months. Ah, yes, the most wholesome <laughs> show on the internet. Eels and octopi aside, <laughs> yes. We learned so much today. <laughs> Mo, master. Wolves are based. Yes. And hey, I think that's a great, uh, by the way, I think that's like a really cool nickname. I, I feel like, Mo? you know, no, no, no. We are the wolves oh. at this point. We are the wolves. Oh. We need to be the wolves, right? That's the reality of the situation is that where we're at in society, where we're at in the gaming space, we are the wolves. And I love it. Can we be Balto? <laughs> you can identify us whatever you want. Blast. Thanks. <laughs> Nick Brown. I don't like eels no more. I'm delivered. Delivered. <laughs> um, thanks. <laughs> Andrew, Melanie Mac versus Kotaku, the Mac Taku. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds, sounds like something off like Taco Bell menu. Yeah. Um, Joe, 32 years ago on this day, Contra 3 to Alien Wars was released in the U.S. for the SNES. The new game recently released Contra Operation Galuga is great. Wait, 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 Blabs, you didn't put that on get today's gaming history? You didn't put Contra, not Contra Maybe 3 Maybe I on? missed it. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> Damn. Games no love for from. Contra. I tried Contra once. I didn't like it. The end. <laughs> oh, that explains everything now. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous, really. <laughs> oh, listen, no. you can't do that, remember? Andrew came in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Andrew came in. Rainbow flag people ruin everything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Nissan, to be fair to Kotaku lady, boxing is a lady sport. Real men fight in a cage. Are you going to come back, Craig? Here you go. It's all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're safe now, Craig. Safe space. <laughs> Ryan, it should be mandatory that every kid have like a summer camp where they have to live like it's the 1800s for a week. Yes, let's all be Amish. <laughs> or at least maybe the 1900s. I, I just, it doesn't have to be that like far back. Plumbing. You know? Right. Yeah, indoor yeah. plumbing. Great. Let's have that. Uh, one time at band camp, Melanie, what was your initial reaction to reboot Lara before 2013? Did you hate it even back then, or did you like the new direction? I was I was very open to it back then. I was like, okay, I didn't like the bio changes and all that kind of stuff and making her follow her father's footsteps, but we were all told that, oh, this is she'll become Lara Croft. This is just the start. So I was, yeah, I, I was optimistic at the time. <laughs> Cesario, the BBC acting up again. They found the BBC, yes. And what does the BBC stand for, Craig? Uh, British Broadcasting Cock. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> sure call for $10. Mercante is a demented lemur. Keep winning, Melanie. <laughs> this is insulting to lemurs. They're so soft. Aww. Mm. Poor Don't do Zaboomafoo like that. <gasps> See, okay, Craig doesn't know what Zaboomafoo is. I'm gonna <gasps> make him watch like the intro one day as a video. Oh, Zaboomafoo like, is great. Zaboomafoo <laughs> is top tier. PBS, man. Vosh, sniff, sniff. I smell a big snowflake. Mm hmm. All it's right, Andrew's check. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait, 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 don't, don't Vosh is the, the creepy two. horse stallion guy. Sorry. Right. That's why, that's why you don't want to confuse the two. <laughs> Uh, this Alyssa girl sounds like she needs a dozen cans of sweet fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Greg. Thorn Skies. Alyssa got into gaming because her previous experience with bad dragons on cam was misunderstood for something else. Mm. Oh, no. Vash. People forgot that they can be punched for smack. Thanks, <laughs> Vash. <laughs> Sunday, dear Melanie Mac, you need to do training montage like little Mac versus Alyssa, the final boss of Kotaku Punch Out Edition. <laughs> Knock her out and win. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. I'm telling you, I wouldn't win. I wouldn't. I... <laughs> I really you don't... and I are putting together a training montage then. We're going to go out into the farm and it's going to be the most inspirational thing in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the true douster for five British pounds. To paraphrase Goku, I guess lying her face off is that Kotoko's journo is her only real strap because she's too weak to challenge Melanie Mac one to one. Someone else was like, why didn't she challenge Gina Carano? to a fight Lord J can Taku can't stop 
Kontaku can't stop the internet's favorite gamer word, lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, the night. Hey, uh, r- real quick, Mel, has ever since all this happened, have you seen an uptick in like subscribers that people like found you and been like, oh, it's great to see you? Like, uh, or but yeah, just on kind of YouTube, I got like a thousand more on YouTube, and it's funny because like I didn't even, I haven't even talked about it on my channel. Uh, because I'm just like, I, I stick to like the gaming stuff for the most part. I, I don't like to involve myself in drama with people, but uh, that's been her thing. But I have, yeah, I've I've gotten like a thousand more YouTube subscribers and a thousand more Twitter followers and uh, even s- had comments on Instagram of people saying, oh, I found you because of this, all of this drama going on with that Kotaku lady. And I just wanted to show you some support. And it's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. The night clerk for five dollars. My female corrections officer friend just volunteered to go to create a clash for you, Melanie. How nice of her. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's <laughs> one time at band camp. Did Craig move himself so he's surrounded by girls? Well, actually, <laughs> women, not girls. <laughs> Viper gifted one side scroller membership. Yeah, let's freaking go. Let's go, Viper. Sonny came back. If she wants to fight, settle this like gamers. Challenge her to Mortal Kombat. Then finish her. I would <laughs> win that. Now, I would win that. I actually uh, had a, a 1v1 against a dude on Walmart Game Center, of all things. <laughs> and they, I kept beating him every time that they put a blindfold on me and turned me around. And I still beat him. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Melanie, what would your awesome. fatality move be? be think? Oh, I would just slather them up in butter. <laughs> <laughs> what, and then eat them? Suffocate them? <laughs> and then bite their head off. There you go. <laughs> Violence is still with you. HT25, member for one month. Just tune in now. Mel, you are loved. You are awesome. Never back down. Also, thanks for reading the Bible to me. Thank Hi, you. Melanie. That's so nice of you. 60 watt, powerful words from savvy, powerful, moving, stunning, and dare I say, brave. <laughs> well, I am DEI today, stunning and brave. <laughs> T D down T down under became a YouTube member. Thank you very much. And also had those 10 gifted memberships. Thank you again. Woo! All right. Mm, let's see. Jacob says Melanie has done more in gaming than Alyssa. Fact. Yeah. Thank obviously. you. Lord J, wow, the militant leftist wants a final purge of the people that cause her struggle. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Epsilon Ama says, the Trinidad chick needs to stop purging burgers. <laughs> Justice for the burgers. <laughs> uh, Tony says, Hollywood is on my hit list for a reason. Damn. <laughs> All right, Tony. <laughs> hit list in Minecraft. Yeah, in, in Minecraft. Power World, in Power World. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crit nature. Some psychiatrists will get crazy rich when the woke bubble finally bursts and all these activists come crawling in. Mm. I, I swear. About, that's how yeah. therapists are making bank from all these people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, have a, I have a therapist friend who, no joke, he said, you want to know how you'll always have, you'll you, the, the best patients are the, are the patients you know that you'll, you'll always have. And he says, yeah. anytime somebody walks in with blue hair, they know they have a patient for life. <laughs> <laughs> what you said is very true. And so there yeah. was a recent study actually that shows that there's more bad therapists than good therapists. And good therapy right. is amazing for people. But therapy right now, as it stands, is actually having a negative impact. That that makes a lot of sense. it's validating sad. people. Yeah. 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 I had to undo damage done to my mother. And that's what got me looking into that a while wow. ago. Oh, so, mm. yeah. Mm-mm-mm. What a mess. Yeah. Beasel Bob, big penis. The unwell people are the ones with pronouns. <laughs> That's a great name. Yeah, <laughs> Megs. Hey, Craig, inside so screw, screw, crew. First time ever donated in my 22 years of living. Been watching Craig and his amazingly real content from the Screw Attack Top 10s to this amazing podcast. Keep it up, guys. Well, thank you, Megs, and hello. All right. Megs, thank you very much. I really appreciate that being a first timer. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you very much for your longtime support. Uh, Tony, video gaming has been terrible since 2014 anyway. Well, you gotta find some here and there. <laughs> Antonio, Mercante looks like the chick Sam Hyde hired for the iDubs documentary to play a crackhead. Love y'all at Side Scrolls. Found y'all through the SBI stream. Well, hi. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, Maiku, evolving, except in the Middle East. Correct. 
Uh, Lieutenant Cyber or Cyber. Correction for Craig. White leftist women. Yeah, yeah I that's see, true yeah, that because is, yeah. because I, I I know a lot of uh, it, it is easy to see that and say I think that it's all white women, but a lot of white statistically speaking, most white women uh, are more conservative. They vote yes. conservative. Yep. It's always like it always starts with college indoctrinated women. Really, right. Yep. Yeah. So. yeah. I had a humanities teacher who was very much TDS and like I was in agriculture. We didn't need to know the stupid art shit. And she just went ham on this. And it wasn't even in America either. It's amazing. Epsilon Ama says the BBC Jezbel wants a purge, a last solution to the gamer question, if you will. Gamers of the world unite. Mm. Big blue Mina Miku. Give it time and those photos of jewels will include cropped hair, random tats, and crazy eyes. Yeah. Uh, Push up says Sap. One of these panelists, not Craig, is brilliant and made the observation that biblical morality runs counter to animal instincts. Since that has put us on top, isn't it the evidence of Bible's merits? So he's saying that that because the Bible says do not kill, that's why that puts us a, ahead of animals, essentially. If I'm understanding that right. I don't understand anything. Uh, well, how the happens. Bible tells us to go against our instincts, if you oh, will. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and that's fair. I come at things from a very biological standpoint. So when I talk about um, those kinds of things, you know, like biological fitness is not just how how strong are you and how much you can lift. It's it's how how beneficial you are to keeping the species alive. So. I don't come at it at all from a uh, philosophical standpoint. And that's only because that's not my area of expertise or my area of understanding because I have a lot of uh, existential dread and it's a constant internal battle. So when I talk about science, you, you really have to look at it from a scientific lens. Don't try to bring any form of feeling into it. I absolutely love that religion has actually helped people be less violent as a whole, I realize that there are obviously extremist movements throughout history, crusades, and then extremists through, you know, other actions. But at the end of the day, those are the actions of the individual, not the religion itself. Um, so, yeah, there's there's just a lot of sep I separate things very carefully. <laughs> Okay, push-ups. Oh, I thought we just read that one. All right, <laughs> next one, 60 Watt. I miss the old days when the only peak into the game industry I had was Nintendo Power, Game Informer, <laughs> etc. <laughs> Josh says an animal lashes out when, mo when most is cornered, when it's most cornered. The e DEI cultists are going more and more nutty because their cultural domination is starting to fail. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. Kyle, the Bears fan, for 10. Call me an ist or phobe. I don't care anymore. I'm done speaking up for, speaking up for what's right. Also, never heard of Savvy before. New fan. Best wishes all. Please have a crochet event. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So funny. I would love that. I don't even know how to crochet. We should put it on. I don't either. <laughs> I know how to crochet. I can, I can crochet Amy Gurumi, the little plushy thingies. I mean, it's been a while, but I used to make little animal crochet things. Yeah. Mm, Craig's writing that down. Crocheting for cripples. I am. I'm All right. Down. Let's make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant Cyber for 20 bucks. The main problem with people who aren't leftists is that they have jobs unlike leftists. Leftists go into government agencies and activists, NGOs, to push leftism and push anti-anyone against lefties, propaganda, and government violence. Mm. They get paid out by the government to sit on their asses all day. It's great. <laughs> Matthew Hammond for $9.99. Did you see the six-month-old Polygon article, Tears of the Kingdom, and it, ending it is it own kind of tragedy going around on X? The quote of comments from RGT85 and others were gold. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. That tweet uh, is the most asinine thing in the world. You have to go read it. Okay. <laughs> you just I'll, you I'll have to. Up. Mo, Lester. Once again, I apologize for my retarded country. Canada. It's all right. We forgive you. Sixty what? When I'm taking, what I'm taking from this is don't grift each other. Grift the government. Apparently, that's the <laughs> right. strategy. Uh, Melee K. In 2015, Trudeau denounced misogyny in gaming and GG. So I have to see a future where they consider us speaking up as a hate speech. Oh, well, yeah, Trudeau likes mm -hmm. you know comments. <laughs> Seaman, do polysexuals sleep with parrots? What? Polly, Polly, Polly want a cracker? Wanna, Polly wanna yeah, cracker. I was gonna... 
<laughs> I was literally like, oh, is that a, is that a thing now? Polysexual? <laughs> um, it is. Um, <laughs> what? So so is ecosexual. They wanted to add that to the flag. What? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They also want to add sex workers to the flag, so... I have wow. the best response from Sonny right here. They should add these nuts to the extreme <laughs> game, and that's the response you need. Add these nuts to the flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Cyber, the No Agenda show, is a lot like savvy, reading government, NGO, and media documents and deconstructing them. Mm. Uh, Rem Dog, Desiree, can you play the punch out theme? You know, I don't think I've done that one before, actually. New task. But I could. <laughs> I will one day. <laughs> Orthodox monks, youth with Melanie's favorite accent burned Magnus Hirschfield's disgusting books. <laughs> rainbow stuff. Oh. <laughs> Maiku, how are white women leftists created and sustained? Um, they are government created. They also, I, I like I've said on this on this stream before, it is this um compassion has been weaponized. So yeah. white women uh, feel like they're doing the right thing. They feel like they are um, being compassionate. And then especially if they are brainwashed that they are, are evil for being women. Like this is their way of like penance, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's and uh, honestly, sometimes it could be like a good attribute. It's just been completely exploited and twisted yep. around, which is really it's been really disturbing to see. And I, and I actually do understand that because I feel like for a brief time, I started to kind of fall for a little bit of that. And I felt I like too. I was, mm -hmm. I was being open-minded and loving. I did. And, and, yeah. And so it's like, I, I think that that is, that's totally what's happened. Yep. That's exactly and then you're getting these, my, these my awakening with that was, um, was BLM actually. So in yeah, IC, actually. I don't, I don't live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, um, I live very close to DC and I actually went, I can't be out in the sun for more than a few minutes. Cause um, I, I have a UV allergy. So I wanted to deliver water to them. And I talked uh -huh. to the people on the ground. They are nothing like the people at the top who ended up being really corrupt. Right. And that, that's when I, that's when I saw, okay, these are good people getting taken advantage of. Yep. Yeah. And it, it it was heartbreaking. Yep, absolutely. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that's why I still kind of like hold out hope for a lot of people, the people that mm -hmm. haven't gone really, really crazy, because I think that, yeah. you know, people do have the ability to change. Um, right. But like, I think that people need to feel like it's safe to explore that possibility of change. And that's why I feel encouraged right now with what's going on, because if we do keep poking fun of these people and their ridiculous claims, like we're not falling for your fear mongering tactic, yep. Alyssa, with these tweets, if you call it for what it is, then people are going to start to not be scared off by that. And then they can actually explore like, Hey, maybe I was wrong. So I mean, I did go a little crazy over the last two years. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is as a woman and, and especially really being on the feminine side, it's tough being told, Oh, you're mean. If you're, Oh, you're being a bigot. Like a woman doesn't want to hear it. we're nurturers mm -hmm. by nature. So it's hard to hear that. And I think what has helped me a lot with it, I grew up with brothers. So it's like, okay, so I do have my feminine, really feminine side, but I also have that. Okay, let's go. And so it took me getting over being called a bad person, a mean person, a bigot. I had to be like, oh, whatever. Just take it as smack talk now. Okay. Oh, sure. Call me a bigot. I'll call myself a bigot now. That's how I've been able to handle all of this stuff. I think Craig should lead, read the last super chat. Viper says it's probably black people. <laughs> it always is. <laughs> you know. um, uh, I got one more. Hang on. One more just popped up. Chaos and control for four ninety nine. Blue eyed blonde calling for a final purge. There's a delicious <laughs> irony in there. <laughs> yep. Yes. Mm. Um, Kyle came in says the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Melanie, tell this creature to crawl back into the hole she came from. <laughs> uh, Bizarre Star says, I know this seems like a little bit like a, a bit of a tinfoil hat conspiracy, but it seems that she's trying to divert attention from a certain dumb baby company along with trying to get uh, get some clout. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't recall her mentioning anything about charity before. Yeah, she didn't. It's just, oh, it was all about, oh, okay, here's a boxing match. Let's fight, but... Oh, because it, they raise money for charity, she could spin it that way. That is toxic femininity. If you really want to break all that down, she's employing toxic feminine tactics of 
playing victim. Oh, let me turn this around to where I had good intentions, even though it was very obviously not the case. Uh, Shaker says, the head there. I, I'd rather bang. I'd rather bang that police chick post train <laughs> than ever think about seeing Alyssa's only fan. Wow. <laughs> Oh, true though <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty baller right there I'll tell you what shaker my goodness my goodness um then we have vanguard came in with the 20 very specific 21 dollar and 66 cent direct donation uh vanguard coming in says hey craig been a long time fan from the screw attack days glad to see you back in in such good company uh and in such good company how do you think we can win and uh and make a change with Gamergate too. Uh, baby steps. I think it takes baby steps. And I think the, um, you know, I talk about um, take games back, uh, take games back.com, starting with something as simple as an award show and taking things away from them. Don't give them the power. Uh, that's really what it comes down to is if there's one thing that we've seen. Now, to be clear, most, I think most people in the industry are pretty good people. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just the extreme, it's the extremists, right. That are, that are the loudest. And then they point people into a corner and then they call them an istinophobe and blah, 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 blah. And they go to HR and say, you can't say this. And this is what, blah, blah, blah. We got to slowly take things away to where we eventually own the whole thing and, uh, and take it back. So, uh, Vanguard, thank you very much for your longtime support. Really appreciate that. Uh, Florian came in and picked up the brand new Side Schoolers All Stars t shirt available right now. Uh, go pick it up, link in the description. Also, Gold Magician picked up the brand new Side Schoolers All Stars limited edition t shirt. Says, love that there's normalcy, normalcy on the internet still. Uh, love that there's normalcy on the internet still. Thank you and happy to support. Well, you're going to look great in that, Gold Magician. Thank you very much. Genuinely appreciate that. Uh, we actually do have a little bit of, um, not really breaking news, but uh, this is um, there was a tweet out, yeah, from uh, Alyssa regarding you, Melanie. Oh, Did you oh. Want to, uh, I'm blocked, uh, so I can't even see her stuff right now. Well, she hasn't blocked the take the takings back Twitter account, so okay. uh, let, me, <laughs> let me go ahead and share this. Oh, that'll really change. Quick. Yeah. yeah. And I, I realize we've gone quite a long, long time today, but that's okay. We're, uh, we've been going and blowing today. We got a lot what of happens when you got a bunch of girls on here, chatty, chatty. It's not <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, and it's more the gaslighting that, that she saw. So I'm waiting to see this response from you. Melanie has rescinded, rescinded her agreement to have a chat with me. Well, did you rescind anything? That's crazy. I didn't know you guys said, it. okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought someone who gleefully tweets slurs would feel comfortable talking one on one, but it appears that's not the case. Oh well. Changing the narrative. She's not noticed. She doesn't show screenshots. I do. <laughs> you should respond with the with the. I can't. Uh, she blocked me. That's her method of operation. But if other people want to respond with my screenshot showing what I said, that would work. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm blocked. I was about to do that. Oh, she see that's the thing is she she can't control the narrative when uh when people can actually talk. So if she has people blocked, then she can try to control the narrative. Oh, right. I'm blocked she's blocking too. the person who just uh, wow, she has questions. Wait, wow. she's blocked. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey, I just like to say hi Alyssa. Thanks for watching. <laughs> She must be watching. Oh, yeah. She absolutely she, must be watching. You know what? I wow. bet she really liked my little fishy Good. video Good. for her. I'm glad. Wow. <laughs> Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, Pepe Payne came in over on Rumble, says, honest question. At what point does the hope these, quote, big gaming companies uh, will give us something good turn into, be uh, turn into beaten woman syndrome? Oh, they'll change and keep going back. Right. Uh, the idea of kind of the battered women thing where, you know, where it, 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 they'll change, they'll change. Yeah, I think we're bordering on that. There, there still is good gaming. You know, you think of like right. Helldivers, you think of Pal World, you think of a lot of the stuff Nintendo's producing. It's still good gaming, but a lot of the AAA stuff, you're right. There, There is an element to where people need to more or less man up. Vote uh, with sorry, your wallet women. because the minute that they uh, realize that their bottom line has been affected, that ESG bullshit will go away. Mm -hmm. 
If everybody can please say hi to Alyssa in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> Daramouth uh, came in and says, shut up, silly woman. It's a great, <laughs> funny quote. Uh, Mighty Megatron says, uh, liberal feminazis are ugly, undesirable piss goblins and hate hate beautiful women because men love a lovely lady and and uh, not the Kool-Aid cat piss smelling Birkenstock wearing man bashers. All right, Mighty Megatron, thank you very much for that. Uh, appreciate that. Man, you guys have been uh, awesome today. Dude says, my problem with the Florida bill is now you need to lose your anonymity when using social media. The government now has control of who can access the town square and can tie you to anything they want. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Dermoth came back and says, uh, without the tech, though, uh, none, of, none of you would have the content creation you do now. Uh, would would you give that up to live tech-free tech free life? Yes. I would love to live on a farm and do nothing all day. I mean, both mm -hmm. work on a farm do all nothing day. all day. That's all yeah, they do. Yeah. Farmers work, work, work from four to like 10 p.m. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I, I would not have to look at a screen all day. It'd be great. Uh, Jared says, Unless good morning, ladies. The, uh, it says the weekend show you said you wanted to launch should be called Side Scroll Hers. Happy birthday to your daughter, Craig. And I do agree that kids shouldn't have social media. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate that. Uh, Pepe says, it's why I started homesteading. Uh, great health and happy. Uh, if you uh, if you can, you should try. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Have a great day. Thanks, Pepe. Mo says, don't feel old, Craig. I have a pager. Or I had a pager. I say, if you have a pager. Uh, I had a pager. Uh, you were correct. Growing up in the 80s and 90s was the best era to grow up in, for sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. As I scroll and I scroll and I scroll. Uh, Shane says, uh, my favorite verses are from the book of Romans, verses 23 through 24. Uh, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. That's great. Mighty Megatron says, let me stand stand in for you and fight Mel. Uh, let me stand in for you and fight <laughs> Mel. I'll put on a wig and knock her block off and, <laughs> and uh, shit on them when they challenge my identities. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Abomination says, uh, what if some other Christian Twitch streamer contacted her because she said any and made any and uh, made a big stink out of it? Uh, would have been hilarious seeing, seeing that crap unfold. Ha hail sticks of butter. Thanks, Abomination. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, um, Omnistone Herald says feminist claims to hate toxic masculinity. Also feminist. Fight me, bro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, man, oh, man, the chats have been busy today. Thank you guys very much for all the support, uh, no matter wherever you're tuning in, whether it's uh, Rumble, whether it's YouTube, whether it's over on Locals. Thank you guys very much. And Kick. Yeah, and on Kick. Yes, mm -hmm. Kick, Kick, Kick. That's right. <laughs> uh, Nicodemus says, while you are fighting the good fight, remember, if you, want a, if you want a perfect world, all you have to do is remove all the people keeping it from being perfect. Um, if you're okay with that, uh, if you're okay with that, do some soul searching. Thanks, Nicodemus. Appreciate that. It's a, Profound statement. Hmm. I feel like I should have some sort of sounder that just says like the profound statement of the day. Um, wheeling through life with Brian says crotcheting for uh, crow. <laughs> crotcheting. <laughs> what are you <laughs> thinking of? What? That's, that's, the way, that's the way it's it, it's typed out. In, yeah, that, that's um, how crocheting is spelled. Yep. It's spelled like <laughs> crotcheting. Yeah, that's it. It has that silent T in it. Yeah, that's you by chance go to school or learn how to spell, Craig. Okay, crotcheting for cripples. Sign me up. That's that's from Will Through Life with Brian, who is uh, the quote unquote cripple, which is great. I love it. Hashtag I don't like what it got turned into. I love it. I got it written Mila, down. Hashtag Maybe. crotcheting in the chat, please. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. That's outstanding. Oh Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate that. Uh, Blake says, great episode of The View. Uh, this episode, <laughs> this way better. Way better. Uh, let's, and uh, thank you guys again. Uh, as Miku, sa Miku says, uh, be yinzerphobic from Cincy. Thank you, Miku. Crit came in, says, there's a short philosoph uh, philosophical <laughs> statement. I always come up with these days. The healthy are the sick. The sick are the healthy. Matthew says, I replied to the side strollers ex post. Uh, from today's stream with a link to the past the uh, the article not is Zelda. archived as well what's that this is post not past oh link to the post as well <laughs> oh, listen, I think video <laughs> link to the past is great uh gti warrior says melanie you can take her stick and move uh she can't, hit, <laughs> can't hit. 
Elite Neo says, Alyssa is really delusional if she thinks she can take Melanie. Has she seen <laughs> Melanie's workout routine? Has she seen the shape Melanie's in? Weight classes are real. They exist for a reason. <laughs> Sunny came back to us. Uh, can I say all the panels today are stunning? And and Craig, and yes, Craig, that includes you, just in case Aww. you love them. <laughs> Thanks, Sunny. Appreciate that. And Miku came back and says, uh, but, you, uh, but you trading... Would mean no screw attacker G once. That's right. It's, well, it, uh, yes, I would have. Uh, yes, I would rather work on a farm. <laughs> I love you guys, but uh, let's work on a farm together. <laughs> uh, Shane O'Max says no one should fight Alyssa if she bleeds on you. Who knows what you'd catch? Ew. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> All right. That's nasty. Wow. Okay, we you guys were awesome today, uh, ladies. You were spectacular. Um, I, I appreciate all your insight today. I appreciate you all staying a literally an hour late than we usually go. Uh, can we get a round of applause in the chat, please, for these wonderful ladies who have hung Aww. out with us today? I need everyone to go and subscribe to uh, to Melanie Mack, obviously, over on YouTube. I'm sure you're going to have some things to talk about. Yeah. Be great. Uh, you can go find Savvy. Savvy, where can everybody find you? Uh, the best place is probably Twitter through through Madam Savvy. And I'll yes. always post all of the info dumps, 100% free public use. You can, if you like them, you don't even have to credit me. Go have fun with that information. It's all there. It's all sourced. Um, I do also tweet about other things, though. So I'm sorry if you don't like Pokemon. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play Power World? Oh, yeah. Do you like it? Oh, I loved it. So actually, the night with all the drama, I took a picture of my screen, which I was waiting for eggs to hatch. And then I had my Switch playing Pokemon. And I'm like, why are you people choosing? You can literally do both. You can <laughs> there do both, you right? go. <laughs> so, and of I course, <laughs> Desiree, where can everybody find you? Um, I stream on Kick. I'm a pianist on Kick. And pianist. Uh, pianist. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Um, and, I sometimes I've restreamed to YouTube also, but YouTube's kind of funny about music. So I'm mostly on oh, kick yeah. and on Twitter. That's right. Go over and make sure you, uh, let, let's, let's get, uh, Desiree's numbers up over there. Make sure you follow over there, over there and, uh, and you, you stream in the morning, right? Before the show. So, yep. I often get... raid side scrollers actually. That's right. I end right around the time y'all are starting. That's right. So you can get warmed up for the show with some wonderful pianist music which would be great. So, all right. Uh, you can also find Blabs over on Kick, where she looks at uh, E-Thoughts all the time and oogles with her. with her. Uh, I play games too, eyes. Craig. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure you do. I uh, played Apex yesterday for the first time in months. It was great. Was it good? Did you like it? Yeah, the, the new update's great. Try it. Oh. Did you get hacked? No. Okay. Because <laughs> that's kind of been the thing. All right, uh, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Genuinely appreciate you all. Uh, I will be back. Uh, I will, we'll have definitely some videos that come out of today's today's uh, stream. So I won't be doing any standalone videos today. With that said, guys, have a great rest of your day. And remember, people going to try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. Common sense is real. You're in the middle of it right now. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Spread the word. Let people know about the show. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.